Ed's studio. This is Ed Templeton. Ed Templeton, can you say hi, hi. to the audience? Hello. Recording another episode of Thrill It All. And uh, we're here to talk with Ed about all the cool stuff that's happened in his life and skateboarding and inspirations. I, that's a that's like a buzzword for this podcast. I'm like trying to find what inspired people to become who they are. Um, and I will tell you, I watched all your parts last night. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> because I knew there was a New Deal promo video. Yeah. And you never it's not saw it? No, I saw it. I saw it. I remember like the impossible lip slide being like really like a big deal. It's the last trick. Possible rail tap? <laughs> no, dude, you, you properly <laughs> slid. Your wheels gripped the top. I probably slid a little. <laughs> no, no, you properly slid. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, I watched the New Deal video, uh, the New Deal promo video. How long did that come out before Useless Wooden Toys? Pretty. Like a year? Six months? Yeah. I don't even know. I don't see. I don't know. And <laughs> Within the year. It. All that yeah. stuff happened so quick. I look, yeah. when you look back, you kind of realize like, like from 90 to 94 was tons of shit happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, I went through three different companies, you know, it's yeah. like, it was like Schmidt Sticks, New Deal started. You know, TV, what, are, and then on the toy machine, and then toy machine, yeah. all in that weird little range, like '93. So, what year? What? How old were you when you first got sponsored? I think it was. I started in '85, '86. This is another thing that's weird. I mean, I started in '85, and was pro by '90. So, five within five years of just being picking up a skateboard. Yeah. You know. I also I was, saw your skate TV segment <laughs> that's embarrassing i saw that recently too <laughs> yeah you're like this is stupid you're like talking to the camera saying i look dumb huh i feel really weird standing yeah. here talking to you guys and then i try to like be cute and say like it's tomorrow or today or some weird thing you know what i have an interview it's really funny maybe i saw that as a kid but i have an interview of me it's really embarrassing i was probably 15 years old at like some foundation spot and i kind of do a similar thing to that and maybe that was something that was happening around that time in like 90 or 91 where you like talk to the camera in that weird, funny way. Because I did the same thing. And I, yeah. I remember being embarrassed about it for a solid like decade. Every time I watched it, I was like, and I would even think about it some days and be like, oh man, that's so weird what I did. But I thought that thing was good. I mean, I, I grew up being a fan of yours and nothing ever seemed weird to me. I mean, even the parts where it was like, I don't know, you being funny or you like ragging on yourself, like even in newer videos, like I'm such a fan of, you know, your skating and who you are and as a person and we always had a good, you know, good friendship. And I, um, I've always appreciated all those things. And I think everybody else does too. They appreciate those nuances about you. Wouldn't well, you think I, so? Yeah. I always just thought everyone took everything so seriously. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm being filmed. I have to like, and like the idea of poking a hole in that kind of makes, makes it easier to talk. Cause I, you know, I get awkward. I'm awkward right now. Just like starting this podcast and yeah. I, and I don't, you know, I don't know how to subvert it in a way to make it more comfortable. So that's, that's one of the ways is just to like... Get weird and call it awkward? Yeah, just yeah. be, yeah, yeah like state, state it. Like, I yeah. feel weird right now. And then that's yeah. part out of there. the... Yeah, it's, it's out, out there. Like, I, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm, it kind of can't get any weirder when you when you call it out like that. Kind of, yeah. yeah. And you're just there and then... So you grew up in Huntington Beach, right? Yeah, well, all around Southern California in a way. But like, like most, yeah. 16, 17, you were like Huntington, right? Oh, yeah, like started skating in Huntington Beach. Yeah. And, Basically moved. And who know. were like who were like the dudes that you looked up to? Like, what what do you remember being your first inspiration of like these guys? Are Eric Estrada. Eric Estrada. This guy, Eric Estrada, not the guy from Chips. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you looked, you like Chips that much? No? No, no, not that guy. Um, no, there was this local <laughs> kid, Eric Estrada. He was do you know where he's at best. now? I, I've run into him here and there. Like, he's at the got a daughter grocery store or, or like, something? Yeah, I like saw him down at the beach one day. That's a surprise. You're never there. Yeah. Um, just he was just the best kid, you know. Yeah. It's one of those guys that, out of all of our group, it's kind of shocking that he didn't like become the guy. Yeah. Become a pro or or become famous because he was. Did you skate with way, him? And like... Yeah, I mean, he was way ahead of everybody. Yeah. You know, I'm learning how to ollie, and he was like doing kickflip, melon grabs on flat ground kind of thing. You know, wow. just eons above everybody in wow. this little zone in Huntington Beach here. Was and Jason Dill no? was someone who grew up next to him on the same street. Oh, wow. And so Jason was here, you know, but he was like the little kid. I've talked about this before where he was kind of like the runt, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember seeing him in the A1 Meets video and stuff. Yeah, he was the runt to us even at that point. Like, yeah. We were like the older kids. So we yeah. would get you to were go. like 16, 17. He was like 11. Yeah, we'd get to go to the high school and his yeah. mom would be like, 
you know, you can only go if these if these guys say they'll t- watch you. And we'd be like, yeah. no, and just skate off. <laughs> like, like, fuck you. <laughs> Not fuck you, but just like we didn't want to deal, we don't want to watch them kind of thing. Yeah, so we would just, yeah. and it felt, you know, in retrospect, it was probably kind of mean, but that's how kids are. You don't really yeah, see yeah. it that way. Yeah, you're um, not trying to babysit or whatever. I, I can understand that. So he was around, but, the, you know, Eric was the guy. Like, as, as far as like, wow, this guy's incredible. And, and he was kind of the alpha male and like, was kind of mean to all the like he knew everyone wanted to be his friend and so he kind of like used that to his advantage yeah yeah when did skating with jason lee come into the picture wasn't that kind of early yeah that came in really quick um where was he from he's from huntington beach too as far as i recall i don't know where he grew like really so like 16 17 you're skating with jason all the time oh yeah yeah he was i think he's a year older than me in high school so he was a senior when i was still a junior did you finish high school huntington beach high um, no, I didn't. I'm a dropout officially. Me too. But um, I'm not pr- proud of it. But, but it's yeah. It's I was proud of it when I was young. It was yeah. I never really like cared about it. I I feel like I don't like to say it though because I yeah. want kids. Absolutely. I don't want to be like an influence of like, dude, I can drop out like Ed yeah. Templeton because I think learning is a lifelong experience and I'm still doing that. I'm totally like, I with read you on all that. the time. I'm like interested in everything. So, you know. Learning never stops. I know I know college dudes who went to college who literally just go like, I'm not reading books anymore. I did my college. Like, you know, like wow. their mind is shut off and they're not learning anymore. They're not interested in like... Yeah, what's that Gandhi quote? Engaging uh, in anything. Live as if you'll die tomorrow. Learn as if you'll live forever. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't, I don't like saying it because I was right there though. You know, I, I was a shitty student because of skateboarding and other interests. Yeah. You know, kind of like dragging at, you know, passing with C's kind of thing. And then... uh had I had one month more of school, I would have graduated. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. That close. It was like right there. And then it was like, hey. Did you go on a tour or it something? Was, yeah, it was Europe. It was like. And that was the year you wanted I'm to I'm 18. There. Yeah, I'm 18. I'm, a, you know, a month away from finishing high school. And they said, we want you to go to Europe to these contests. And I was just like, never looked back. Wow. Thing, you know? So I don't, you know, I don't. I saw that or too. I high school, luckily. You got but, a super sick black New Deal long sleeve on in that shorts. Super cool kid. I saw that today too, and I was like, "Wait, which one?" I think it's Moonster. The Moonster. Someone movie? posted it today. El, El Pato. Yeah, or, yeah. Um, well, the first. It was like the this, first one, this was two. That was the second. Yeah, that, that was, was the second year. That was the second year. I think okay. the first yeah. year. He posted yesterday. The reason I had the, the first one, I have a pink shirt on. Yeah. And the reason I have a pink shirt on, not that I was like anti-pink or anything, but I like had this pink New Deal shirt somehow that. I didn't want to wear because I yeah. was just like, dude, I don't want to like wear this pink shirt out. <laughs> Everybody's just looking at you. Yeah. yeah, it just seemed weird. And I and the contest was the last thing, and I had ran out of clothes. Everything was like so rank that I literally was just like, I just got to put this pink shirt on. It's the only clean shirt I have. So like, I skated the contest in the pink shirt, and, and you like, won the contest. Just got the on the plane shirt. and left, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that would would have been a gnarly event, right? Up to your life, that was probably the gnarliest thing, like winning the world championship. At oh, 18. for sure. And at that time period, I mean, you saw in that video. Um, the fucking crowd was insane. It was huge. A real stadium packed with yeah. real people cheering, like full on <laughs> cheering, you know? Yeah. The pressure of that felt pretty crazy. Yeah. And then there was a Tahoe contest that year too or something, right? And you won that as well? Yeah. That was first actually. Yeah. I think. Yeah. The Terror at Tahoe maybe? Yeah. Something like that. And at that time, there was like, you had your signature moves. I mean, I know you took those signature moves like with you throughout skating, but like you had your signature moves of like the impossible, the one foot. Um, the one foot board, um, one foot lip slide. And I didn't realize that you were so good at big spins. That promo video and useless wooden toys, you were big spinning. Like They came and went, though. Front big spins, everything, like downstairs. I remember like, in the middle of my career um, not being able to do big spins and thinking, like, what happened? I used to do those all the time. Yeah, it was your last trick in Welcome to Hell, right? 50 50 big spin. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Out of a rail, though. It's easy. Yeah. Because you're higher on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> that was like that was a big deal though. Chris Ortiz filmed that, right? Uh, I can't remember. I think he did. <laughs> oh yeah, that one. Because yeah. he he zooms in know, right I away. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was a big deal at the time. That was like a flip out. You know. I mean, I remember thinking I, I put it last in your part. I thought like we thought it was like yeah. sick. I remember you liked it and wanted it. Last. That was weird. Dude. Like I was just like whatever. You I want. mean the front in the in the front feeble. You front feeble. Like that's the first front feeble I saw on a rail and it had a kink on it. Like was that one of the front first front feebles on a rail that you know of? I um, apparently Heath had the he had a cover, doing a front feeble, a transwell cover doing a front feeble. But uh, I found out El that it was a bail. Yeah, at El Dorado. I found out that it was a bail. Not and even around the same time period. 
I don't know exactly. 95 would have probably been the Heath cover, maybe. I had just seen, I just know I had seen that, but I don't know when I started doing front I remember that day going, like, this is the craziest rail to do this on. I remember filming at Long Lens going, he's front peebling this rail with a kink on the end. And I didn't, I hadn't really even ever seen anyone front people a rail in real life, and you were doing one of the kink. And I liked how it seemed like you were so motivated to skate HB spots. Like, <laughs> I didn't want to go anywhere far. You didn't want to go anywhere far. And so, like, you would work so much harder to get your job done in Huntington Beach. I remember just being fascinated by that. Like, uh, like so committed to HB. Like, well, one, one, two things about that. One is, I think the kink thing, I mean, you've seen, like, the Huntington Beach rail. Mm-hmm. At the Huntington Beach High School, that the, I yeah, the had like flat the cover of trousers were on it had it had a kink like that. Someone had backed a car into it and it kind of oh, softened oh, the, the Huntington, kink. The yeah, the HB High Rail, yeah, like HB High Rail. You know, someone had you know it's like kind of a harsh kink, but someone you know tilted it just a hair down so it was just kind of softer. But I think look, that was our rail. Yeah, yeah. So we learned on this. You know, kink on the rail. promo video, you have two board slides on that, two grinds on that, and two front boards on that rail. Okay, yeah, in the same what, part. Yeah, and it's like that was. That's what we skated. That was the thing. Yeah. And uh, so I, I think that quickly sort of dissipated, like the, the idea of a kink being yeah, it wasn't harder, a big deal. Like, it wasn't yeah, it was a big just deal. like kinks. Because then we skated the ones in the hallway. That, that was big. Which had a gnarly kink. Yeah. I mean, that was like, you feel like you're hitting. Yeah, and it was like a seven or something, something. too. Yeah. Like you had enough speed to actually yeah. feel the kink. Yeah, we broke our boards a lot on that. Yeah. Like yeah. a bunch of us all broke. I remember Jason Lee like trying to board side it and snapping his board and I, I did it a few times if you didn't have your knees bent to like right. absorb the kink you were like you were gonna... when I was a kid you know I, I saw the I saw the promo video and that was the first time I'd known of you I don't know if you had like a major part before that was that like your no kind of your that first was major it. video part that was really it yeah, yeah. And like my friends and I were we were blown away and we really wanted to learn impossibles and at that point you know I think maybe freestylers had done it but we you yeah, know, it was didn't a really, movie. yeah, we didn't really pay attention to freestylers. So how did how did the impossible come about for you? Like, you know, and, and I think after this, I kind of want to get to like you know bigger like life questions of inspiration. But like this, I'm, I've always been fascinated with. Where did you see someone doing it, and how did you? Start I can trace it, it exactly. Basically, okay. we skated at Huntington Beach High School all the time as skaters, as mm-hmm. kids around this neighborhood. That was like the place where there was ledges and stairs and stuff. Across the street was this place called Pay and Play Racquetball Courts. It was like four basketball court or two basketball courts side to side, and then this like Pay and Play Racquetball place where you you know like handball racquetball pay money yeah. to like have oh. the door open and then you can go in and oh, like, okay. play racquetball in there. Oh, okay. I don't think anyone really really used it. I mean, basically there was walls out front that people did wall rides on, and then um, essentially Don Brown, who was a Vision Pro at the time, yeah. Vision's like the hugest company at the time. Yeah. Um, would just that was his practice spot so we'd come out of school you know and there'd be Don Brown across the street skating and we're like oh there's Don Brown like we know yeah. who this is, guy is because we inhale everything vision yeah he's had he had the cover you know he was like you know a pro yeah and so we'd go talk to him like there's the guy sponsored like he's amazing you know yeah. so and then over, you know over time it was just like Don's like the you know he's the coolest dude ever he's just totally. like talk to us and like you know yeah, he's super fun. Be nice dude. to us, you know. Yeah. He'd be like, "Oh, here's some here's some wheels that I don't I don't need anymore." So we like always have all of the kids around there would have like we'd be riding street boards with these weird Vision freestyle wheels, these like tiny square ones. That's sick. Everyone had those. Those became like the cool street wheels. Like, yeah, a and that, years later. we would just do that because yeah. essentially because Don would give us free because stuff. before that it was like sim streets and they were like massive. Yeah, big, and big. then and then the the what was it the you know rat bones and then the vision I think blurs the, and stuff. Yeah, vision yeah. blurs. They were all kind of chunky. Yeah. 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 So we and we felt you know we invented reasons why we thought they were better. We're like, oh, these square wheels are better for like gripping yeah, your fifty yeah, fifties and stuff. Yeah. You know, we invented ideas of yeah. why it, why it worked. And I, and I don't think you're necessarily wrong because those big no, round, probably, round wheels would grab what you're doing for sure. Yeah. And then you know over the time uh, we found out where Don lives, so we'd go to his house and literally like <laughs> knock as little groms and just yeah. ask for stickers. And he's like one of those guys who'd be like, oh, come in. I have like a stack of magazines if you want to look at it. You know, oh, it's that's like, amazing. You know, pedophiling us into his house. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, but I remember like that being a really kind of world opening sort of thing. I mean, you, it, what's one thing to be a street grom in Huntington Beach who's only lived in Southern California to like be entered into like a pro skater's life who's just you know, probably hooking up with girls every night. He's got beers laying around. You know, he's from... He's it's from, hard to imagine Don. I know I know. No, but saying, you know, he's... I know what you're saying. Like a, you know, like a guy. A, yeah. A, a 20... Yeah. 20 was he year a bachelor, old dude. A bachelor, bachelor living yeah. in Huntington Beach in an apartment with a, probably some other dudes. Yeah. It was like a bachelor pad. 
and they had mag skate mags everywhere and you could tell that they had partied all the time and like yeah that's and epic. and they'd always had cool music on yeah. you know that's what i mean by like you're as a kid you're just like whoa this guy's from the England. His accent's cool. His music's fucking cool. Yeah. He's like got all this free stuff and like skate mags. So you're like getting to. I mean, I probably learned so much just looking at these weird old mags that to yeah. me were you know, at that age like there was no access to like old magazines for us. So we were looking right. at like stuff from like five years ago. So you got to see him skate obviously too. Like. And then the, yeah, and then it comes back to that. Like we started you know skating, skating with like him. hanging with him. Yeah, we he let us in his house. So you know. The, He's the guy you see around town. So we would be like, let's go skate with Don. At the, he's at the, he's at the pay and play. Let's go skate there with him. And me and Jay Lee would go skate there and do lines. That's what we called it. Like, let's do lines with him because he had these routines he would do. And we were just like, let's do that too. Let's string like four tricks together in a row. And it's almost like playing like horse with it. You know, yeah. like, I'll do, or add a trick I'll do whatever. like a three flip and and then a big spin and then a one eighty. You know, simple stuff back then. And just like backside one eighty and then big spin oh, around see, and then yeah. and then a shove it and then yeah, a the kick flip it. or something. Yeah. You know, like yeah. do like it was we, every street line back then. Yeah, we would just later, we would just each do that. Time. We would each yeah. do that and copy it. But then I think those guys influenced us to like take those like that common street line and do it like airwalk finger flip three flip impossible. Like so we were increasing that so he knew how to do impossibles and you got to basically i don't know sing. if don don brown even did it so how did it how did it come That's well just we the, knew rodney did it like and stuff like that i mean i think don had did impossibles too all those guys did but but rodney is where it really like yeah yeah we yeah for sure and so, i'm doing i'm gonna do an episode with rodney too yeah, and i can't so wait so you'll you'll get to the bottom of it but um you know it that trick was out there so i mean i had a freestyle board i mean i from yeah, I've seen you. I've seen, I've seen you back in the day. I remember seeing you jump into rail flips and do things, and I was like, "Whoa, that's really weird." You know how to do freestyle <laughs> tricks, but then I realized that. You yeah, guys I mean, we hung out, and I was, you know, it was like to the point where like Don was so cool, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Oh, yeah, I'm gonna get a freestyle board." But back then, skating was different. It wasn't as as weirdly tribal. It was kind of like, I mean, everyone made fun of freestylers, <laughs> even Don. You know, Don like was the first to like make fun of it, uh, freestyle. Yeah. In a in a funny way. But, you know, as kids, we would go to the castle contest and do, like, we'd enter the slalom and the high jump just to try to get trophies, you know? Like, so That's we were doing sick. everything. We'd go there and, like, enter street style, enter freestyle, enter slalom, enter high jump, just to, like, hopefully, like, And would you guys trophies. win some of those trophies? Like, yeah, that's what I mean. Those? I have, like, there's a, a bucket up there with a bunch of freestyle trophies and stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's I've amazing. Got, I think I won a freestyle contest like, that is amazing. before I was sponsored, really. You know? I never knew that. So... That's anyway, kind of so, where it came from. So the impossible came from these flat lines. You and guys then it was, skating And then it was ground. natural to like take it. I remember, you know, and I've talked about this before, but I remember being skating at the school. We had been doing like these lines and I'm like, you know, I think I can do like this down this four stair. Yeah. And I remember like trying it, messing around and then doing it and calling Don. Don was at the high school. It's in Useless Wooden Toys, right? Yeah, I think it is. One of these, something like that. I but, think it's in Useless Wooden Toys. But I remember calling him over and we've talked about this because he, he remembers it as like the marker of like his death you know like oh, yeah. you know his career, taking his you know, freestyle moves to the basically stairs. he yeah. yeah and he's he said this um you know calling him over basically like check this out come over here and he'd like come over and i'm like look at this i'm doing an impossible down the stairs and he's just like he told me he's just like yeah he's like i saw that and i was just like i'm fucking i'm done and at that around that time was jay lee pushing the three flip kind of simultaneously yeah what's funny is we both like i think i had a really good free, free flip in the beginning yeah and I liked Impossibles too, and I but we both did, we both kind of did both equally, but I think they slowly turn in your signature moves, kind of. Yeah, because I you know, three flips. I mean you've been around me. I did a yeah. couple three flips back in the for sure back in the day, but not it wasn't like I wasn't as comfortable. I know, but I saw them. I saw them in your old videos, and it looked like they were really comfortable. It was yeah, like an, I mean there was a point when I had them. <laughs> yeah, I mean I saw the Impossible though. You could take it to anything. Like you you'd go over any hip, and I, I've been in a lot of demos with you, obviously, and been to a lot of contests. And the Impossible was like a button. You push a button, and the Impossible tail grab comes out, and you yeah. pretty much like I'm surprised when you don't make it. I remember you know a long time of just knowing that was going to be your move, and then you just would do it each time. And then you know I don't know over the times your signature moves went into front blunts nose blunts and all those other moves and I remember being just as shocked at a lot of those um, but yeah the impossible that's funny I mean something you know as a skater like that's your demo move like you know yeah. it's like I don't know if this has really been fleshed out for the public in a way but it's like because doing a demo is like a weird performance act it is you know? yeah. and you kind of go in under the guys of like I'm gonna go skate for these kids and do this stuff but as a as the person doing it you kind of know like I immediately walk up 
and everybody does this, I'm sure. You walk up, you look at the course. You size up your stuff. Yeah, you immediately go, okay, that's my ender. You know yeah. it You know it from the, the minute you see that <laughs> thing. You're like, I'm going to impossible 50 that, bump to ledge, and I'm going to save it till the end, <laughs> you know. And you stuff starts dying, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna start trying this, and then yeah. you know, you got Sometimes gotta, it's like a travail. You like, it's taking you 50 tries to do yeah, it, and when you do the it, worst. the kids are psyched. Or it is the worst feeling though when you get when you get into something over your head, or you waited too long to start trying it, yeah. and you don't have the gas in order to deliver. <laughs> yeah. And you and the the world is like crumbling around you. Yeah. You know you're it about feels to. So terrible. It's so terrible. And the and the more you try, the digger, you, the the further you, you know you you dig the hole, and it's like you're just digging yourself deeper. Yeah. And it. And then you have to like find it in yourself somewhere, somehow to get a make out. Even if it's oh, a sketchy make, just deep, something, yeah. something. Because you set yourself For up sure. to either be the ultimate winner or the ultimate yeah. loser. Well, if you watched every part, did you see, oh, I don't know, maybe you didn't watch Sucking the Life video? Maybe I didn't watch it. Oh, no, last night I didn't watch it. No, I watched yeah. most of your older parts because I was pretty familiar with the newer ones. Yeah. Um. Well, Sucking Life is like a weird tour video we did. I don't even know if it's on, it might be like on the DVD bonus or something, but... Yeah, there's one in there where it was like a lot of tries, yeah. nose blunt, across and down like that. Yeah. You know, my old, yeah, my, yeah. my second demo move. Uh, yeah. It took. I so always was fascinated, but it was rad because when it ended, like every kid just came and like tackled me. Yeah. And it felt so rad, even though it was just like in my head, I'm like, this is lame because I should have done this first try. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. I had an impossible fifty in Canada like a year or two ago, and um, I I wasn't feeling up to it, and it was like I had kind of put on a crappy demo performance and it was like after the Impossible 50 came out on Clipper. And I know that like if I start trying it at a demo, people get hyped because yeah. you know they, you that one at Clipper, that. they you know saw on television, they saw the My War and they're like, oh, we're about to get to see a My War, a mini My War, you know, yeah. or maybe he does it really quickly. But they're always My Wars because I like, for a while, was, like when I did the Clipper one, I was doing it a lot. Like every park I went to, I was just, yeah, ra so I would wrap right. into them and I, would, I wouldn't even put many, my feet on the top of the hub on much. I would just go straight into it and just try and commit around that time around that time period and now when I revisit it it takes me a while to get like in the zone I got to get my angle worked out I got to get it all the yeah. speed all that stuff and I went deep in this one in Canada and I ended up making in the crappiest impossible 50 but like I took it and was just like yeah and everyone cheered and went crazy yeah if you're for, standing you know. it's just the effort too a lot of times that kind yeah, I of think stuff I think you're right you're just putting in the effort and kids yeah. appreciate that you they came do. there and killed yourself for whatever so yeah I love the demo dynamic um Luckily, I had one of our younger kids, J.S. Lapierre, that like his hometown, and he murdered the demo, and so I was like a sideshow. Hometown, yeah, I, hometown yeah, here. Yeah, he was, and he was, he, he did every trick, and it was insane. Yeah. I was like the, the parsley on the side, you know what I mean? Like he yeah. was the main course. Well, later, later in my life, like late, later, late career demos would be like I'd see my thing, and start doing it right away because I'm like I know it's gonna take me 150 tries to land this. Just be like straight to the nose, one across and down, like whatever it is, and it's I'm gonna take it like 80 really bad slams, and like I'm just gonna. But I'll finally. You know get what there. I have too is like you know, and we had this on Toy Machine. There's a ton of regular footers on Zero, and we have sometimes a fight for who's gonna get to all their moves first. Oh. You know, and that, that used to happen back in I the day. I remember on yeah, toy, yeah. On to to toy tours it would be. We'd drive up to a rail and you guys would be like, I call Smith, I call yeah. Front Blunt or something. I mean, like. And we always knew that that didn't matter because whoever got out and did it first. But right. but we, yeah, we would always try and do that stuff. But it was like when me, you, and Musco were on tour together, like we were all regular footers and we yeah. had similar moves. So it was like, you know, especially as we all progressed, um, you guys kind of already had lip slides and, you know, Smith grinds and stuff. And I kind of learned them a little later. I learned them on toy. But um, I, with our guys now, everyone's kind of, you know, dudes had been on tour a lot together. They like respectfully like give that guy like I get the 180 nose grind, I get the 180 <laughs> fakey 50. You know, yeah. um, certain moves even though the other guys can do them like Dane can do them, Tommy can do them, like all the guys right. can do them. They just don't do them because yeah. it's like my move. And I don't have very, very many moves anymore. You know, you work a lot, I have kids, you have all these things, and you know when you go to a foreign skate park you've never been to, you got like your six or eight moves that you do all the time. And sometimes by the end of the tour, you know, you're like starting to get more comfortable and you start getting some more of your moves back, you know? When I get to a park and I'm like, I got nothing for this. I go out and I start talking to kids and I take on this personable persona because I realize I, I need to interact or I need to leave something there, you know? So I just start talking with kids and we play games of skate and it turns more into like an experience than me doing a demo for them because yeah. I realize that I don't have a chance in doing a demo on the stuff. And then sure. I let the young no, dudes... No the young side hubbas or something? Yeah, yeah. Like no a backside hubbas, I can't do anything backside. <laughs> <laughs>
That is awesome. So, all right, let's go back to your 15, 16, you're getting sponsored, Circle A stuff. Did you want to be a pro skateboarder like at that time? Did, when you were hanging out with Eric Estrada, did you think that mm -hmm. like, I don't want to go to college, I want to be a pro skateboarder? Did that like ever no, enter your head? No, it was never like, no. Not in those terms, not in like, this is gonna replace. Cause that's kind of how it was for me. I, I like had no desire for any type of school whatsoever. I was buying time because California, I had my sights set on it at like 14, 15. Yeah. Like I had to go to California. My yeah. whole life revolved around what are the steps? And it needed to be from where you came for from. For sure. But and I'm just saying, see like, how it, totally. But easy in your, it was for me being, you did, you were being already, in the spotlight of where the industry was. Yeah, you're already Like, if I was high. any good, I was going to get seen. Yeah. Here. Like, that's part of it is, like, it was lucky. I, tell, I mean, I tell people this all the time. If you, like, want to make it now, you got to come here. You had no chance in 85, yeah. you know? Yeah. It was just not going to happen <laughs> unless you got so here. When did so you start, you that. when did you start, like, kind of dreaming of being a pro skater? Or did you not? It just kind of progressively happened and you turned around and you were pro. That's what I mean. It kind of just fumbled in. It was, You know, it sounds weird because it's, like, I don't have that, like, this is my goal story. I mean, it just kind of it just kind of happened, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, that's equally Like I cool. said, you start skating. Um you know, next thing you know, I'm skating with Jason Lee and we're pushing each other and we're like, you know, we become like the good kids from around here. Like people yeah. knew us. We'd go to all the little local contests and stuff and we'd place really well. So, you know, everyone knew like, oh, Ed and Jason are like the guys from Huntington. Those, those yeah. are the good dudes from that area. And there was like other guys like that in like La Habra and like, you know, Jeremy yeah. Ray and like different, like Ray Barbie and Long Beach. Yeah. Like everyone knew there was like guys in different, we were just like the HB guys. Yeah. So you know, we got sponsored and stuff like that, but it was just, yeah, we wanted to be sponsored. You know, like getting free stuff was cool. But I don't know if I really saw it. I think latent, latently, yes. Or like that's in you that you wanted to be pro someday. Yeah. But it wasn't like a thing where I was like, I saw the Gons and went, I want to be that. It was just kind of like, but it was already happening. Was the Gons the guy? Like after oh, yeah, Eric Estrada I mean, was the Gons? Oh, the Gons it, was like everything. He I lived know. here at this time. so we Really? Were, really? You yeah, guys he got lived to in Huntington Beach, so we would see him at spots. So like nose yeah. blunts and nollies and all that oh, stuff. All that you got stuff. To I mean, that. I've told this story before too, but like I remember, um, I think it was like Skip Pronator came to school one day and was talking about being skating some curb one night and Gons showed up and did a nose blunt slide on the curb, but he had no terms for it. And it was so awesome. Like, you didn't have I mean, a name for it. I mean, only later did I look back and realize, like, oh, this is so funny, this conversation. Because, like, he didn't know how to explain it. He's just like, so he's trying to tell us, a group of kids at school were sitting at lunch. All the skaters would sit around, yeah. would meet at lunch and just sit around and eat lunch together and talk and stuff. And he's just like, Gons came to the spot and did a nose slide on the inside of the curve. And we're like, what does that mean? What do you mean on the inside? He's just like, dude, like the top, the vertical side. He couldn't explain it. He's like, I'm like, we're like, but we didn't, we couldn't get, wrap our hands around that. Like, what do you mean? You can't do a nose slide on that side. He's like, no, he would ollie into it. So he's like ollieing and then turning it all the way around and nose sliding, sliding the, the inside. Top. And I'm like, nose sliding the inside, like what? But yeah, he was trying to explain. We're like, yeah. what about the wheels? And he's like, he would slide the wheels. You know, like it was just mind blowing. Just yeah. the idea. I mean, I remember Savannah Slam on what two he does what we called at the time a fakie stale fish and it was a switch method and like we were you know i called it a fakie stale fish for like five years because yeah. switch method didn't exist you know what i mean yeah, like yeah, yeah like how and this kind of stuff happened all the time like yeah, so i can skip, only imagine so skip explaining that one day and then i remember going to some local contest you know skating with all like the ams and gone showed up and everyone's freaking out oh gone's is here and this is like this has got to be like 87 or something 88 he did a front side 360 front board to fakie on this like I saw had, like one you, of those high school some of those back in the day too I saw that after seeing that I yeah. tried them but not as yeah. good as that but um I 270 mean, back lip yeah 270 back I mean yeah. we had again there was no terms for it yeah like there was that, no that there was no insane. way to explain it you know you're so just where, like, where do you fuck? think like, where do you think that Gons was because he didn't from. do it like that he, he did it where he basically switched stance midair you know and was doing like a like how he would do a cool stylish front side front side board slide. That's right. how he did it. It wasn't yeah, like so he didn't it wasn't set it wrapped over. It was just like cool looking front board. Yeah, to, another one. And come off fakie, fakie, you know. So it looked like, you know, he started off one stance and then ended like doing a cool flash and roll, you know. Like, yeah, wow. Well. And what it do just you think that so cool. he he got his inspiration? I don't from. even know. He's the genius. Like, it's fucking. It's hard to explain. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But yeah, he is just a mental. So skateboarding genius, like what, creative, creative mastermind. I don't know how to put it, but to, so playful and weird and just awesome, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, that's amazing. Um, so what year, I mean, I think I kind of know, what year did you start Toy Machine? 
93. 93. 93 and 94 is when it went over to Todd. 93 right. is I started it with Brad Dorfman. Right. Who had done Vision forever. And, yeah. You know. And it just kind of wasn't doing what it needed to do and you wanted to move on. You know, over. it was a little weird. Like, Brad was a little strange about, you know, what he wanted. He would, like, try to suggest things. Like, right. there was a little right. controlling action in there, you know. So I'm trying to do this company badly. I might add. I mean, we're just, like, fumbling, doing graphics and, like, trying to figure out stuff. And then he'd be like, oh, you know, you should put some, like, titties in the ad or something. Like, we're like, what? Like, you know, like, yeah. just stuff like that. Or, like, go away, yeah. Dad. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so so, you, you, so you Todd with, called you, me out of literally out of nowhere. I got a call from Swank one day. He was just a Who fan I of, didn't know. Yeah. You know, I knew in okay. passing because yeah. I, like, wrote for Ghetto Wear and, like, when he was doing Foundation under Rocco's building. Yeah. You know, I'd see him around and stuff like that. But Dude, how cool were Ghetto Wear? <laughs> yeah. So cool. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean... So, yeah, I just, I mean, I, it was out of the blue. Like, hey, this is Todd Swank. Um, do you want to do Toy Machine over here instead? And I just, like, in the, with, without even, like, skipping a beat, like, yes. Just like, yeah. <laughs> like, wow. You know? And then that was it. And, like. That was 94? That was 94. 93. Right. So I did it, like, probably even less than a year. Or maybe and then the summer of 94, was that when the team kind of fell apart on that tour, the summer tour? I think it was. Uh, yeah. Because you called me, and it was the summer of 94. That was, okay, here, here's another thing that's weird, is like, I had a team of guys that were probably in a situation where they were stoked to be sponsored and getting free boards, but they liked stereo, personally. Because I, like, a lot of the team meetings and stuff was like... Make it more like stereo. Make it more like stereo. Yeah. And I'd just be like, we're not stereo, we're, we're a toy machine, like, I'm, we're doing this, you know? And I was in my own little world trying to make fucked up ads or whatever. Yeah. And it definitely was not cool compared to, like, using Blue Note stuff and, like, making yeah. it all jazzy yeah. and cool and artsy. And they were a little more, way more advanced, put it that way, as far as design sense and colors and stuff like that. I didn't have that, you know. Yeah, but that's what made Tony Shin so cool. No, that's I know what, what you mean. No, that's what I mean. It, it, we were what we were, and I had to kind of like stay true to that. Yeah. Because I also was looking at their stuff and going, ah, "That's cool too." But on that, <laughs> but, but on, I like. But liked. that was the summer, like because I went to Europe with you in '95, and so I remember you calling me in the end of a summer, right before you left for Europe. It was like at the end of the tail end of the summer tour, and I remember getting the call, like super yeah. randomly. How we didn't even know you. We no, we had just met like in passing. Like we didn't really contests know each other. Yeah, yeah, had a, a few contests. And um back to the city or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember it was. seeing you there. Like, yeah, I had like a weird windbreaker you... or something. Um but well, I remember also like you having like a mystique about you. I don't think I've ever talked to you about this, but you well, at that back to the city contest, you were like ripped and it, you know, it was kind of like that I think that might have been like your it was. It was I like probably my saw first... an ad or something like. Well, it was cool, like you had was a crazy like ad. Intro. But the that contest was like, who's this guy? You had were a little wild. You might have had yeah. like a headband or something. Like... No, I, we had helmets during that contest, but I had hair coming out. But I actually qualified first in the contest, and yeah. it was like a. And I remember that, and then first, but then my first in asking ever. who you are, to people, they were like, yeah, that guy like came from Alabama and he just like lives in a he's like homeless or something you know and I was just like this guy is cool like I don't know like I liked whatever story I heard about you real or not was like I kind of was like this guy's rad like he's just like a, a homeless guy you know, that, <laughs> you know that Jay Lee broke my heart at that at that back to the city contest um you know obviously yourself Jay Lee there's a couple guys gone that like I grew up looking up to like that were like the street gods and you know, I, that was like my first, that was my first pro contest and I didn't understand the etiquette of things. And some of the things were hard to hit. And oh, I had, like... I told you this, I had my board <laughs> no, and I, I had so. my board in the diving board where you're just sitting there to drop in forever. Oh, okay, yeah. And your board is like, your board yeah. is like cock blocking Which everybody trying cool, to skate yeah. the bank. It's not cool at all. And I think I was in the center of total the bank. Ground move. Yeah. Total ground move. <laughs> total amateur night. Next. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it happened twice. The first time. Jason came up to do his th arching three flip on the bank. Yeah. And my board was like in his way because he was coming it. to the top of the bank. I probably was like on the bank watching this. Yeah. Kind of almost he, like brought a memory back. Yeah. And he kind of like, <laughs> he kind of like threw his hands up in the air like, what's up, kook? Move your board. <laughs> and then, and then I was like, oh, I picked my board up and I was like, oh man, that's so embarrassing. Like that's like the street god of skateboarding right there that just called me out for being a kook. And then he did it again. And then I did it again. <laughs> and then like two like two hours later. And the my problem was and I, I didn't have the like whole etiquette worked out. And I I suffered with 
you know, poor etiquette for the first two years of my career because I didn't have like, I didn't go through the ranks. I kind of like just turned pro for like a small company and didn't get like the lesson that came with it. You know, I got a little bit like schooled by Embarcadero, but I was still kind of like learning the ropes. And this was 93, 93 back to the city. And I didn't know what was going on. But anyway, like an hour, an hour later, he came up the bank and was doing his three flip again. And he made this like super making fun of me, like funny, like dorky, f pose that it was supposed to look like me and it was like it was shattering i almost yeah, shed crushed, a tear yeah. i picked my board up and like i oh, like man. i like just kind of like sat there and like i had to regroup i think i might even have walked off and gotten a drink and came back like and then i pulled it together and skated and i actually did okay in the Found contest the hard way, yeah. um but anyway that um yeah anyway so you called me out of the blue uh, sorry i didn't mean to turn that into me it was sort of no but me, it was but, that was an interesting thing because i remember yeah. i don't think i've talked to you about that about the mystique of you like someone said like you were you living on the street and I wasn't there? but it was only like it was probably I mean six or, six or no six no no it was like six or nine months off of the street but I was still kind of living in you know like crappy neighborhood and SF and stuff like yeah. things hadn't well, worked that out was the story things know, hadn't worked like... out for me yet you know it was like I was still kind of struggling and yeah I think I had just actually I did I got on invisible the night before that contest and I saw an invisible ad I yeah it was the front blown on the little yeah, rail that was impressive yeah. to me I was like that's cool but that's that's that was my intro to you in a way. Was this that probably in that invisible ad, and then seeing you at that contest, you were you know pretty wild. I think wild. I had a Spitfire part too, kind of in that time period, and you were in the Spitfire video. Yeah, I must have saw that too. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, if you had had to ask me, like, when do you first remember Jamie? It was probably back to that back to the city contest because I remember just well, that's being cool. like I mean, I... you skating wild, and like I was just like, and then I heard about you like living on the streets and it's something there was something about it that just made me think like this guy's kind of like raw and rad i don't know it made an impression if i called you i guess yeah i mean you and your call was very like hey m my team just all quit and <laughs> we have a few guys but you know it's a few ams and a few like flow guys but you know i hear you're motivated and that I'm just you, stealing you, dudes from other companies right off the bat no and that no i quit invisible i didn't ride for anybody oh, okay. I, I quit Invisible on a summer tour. Maybe that I heard that. It didn't work out. Yeah, and I took this like Greyhound around the U.S. and then I made it. Maybe it made my way back home, and I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was like, had my like sights set on these like, you know, like I was like Plan B or like Alien, you know, and like Deirdre, Deirdre <laughs> You're told like, me Toy Machine. Eh, okay. <laughs> no, no, it was quite different than that. So, and then I was hanging out with Markovich a lot, and I really wanted to get on Prime, but you know, Markovich and I like kind of shared like. You know, we're both kind of alphas and tried to be leaders I in our scenarios. Heads, yeah, yeah, and it, we we kind of did butt heads. We were friends, but we still like it. Still felt a little bit like frenemies, you know. And I always he was like one of my heroes growing up. Like he made it to California, and he basically built the bridge from our area to California for me. And um, amazing skateboarder. And we were you know we were friends, and it was good. And it was probably better that I wasn't you know on Prime. I don't think he wanted me on Prime. But then he wanted me to get sponsored by a different world company. It was like 101 or Blind or one of those. And they were, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if, I don't think Nottis was maybe still there. And maybe, you know, Gons obviously wasn't with Blind anymore. So they were like taking on these new shapes. Um, maybe Nottis was still at 101, but he was trying to get me hooked up on a, by a world brand. And I really wanted to be on Alien or Plan B at the time because I thought, you know, the Alien guys lived right across the street from me. And I always thought Alien was the coolest thing ever. So I thought that would have been super rad. But Deirdick was like, yeah, we don't really just put people on. It's like a real... You know, slow process. We've had the same team forever, and it's not really going to happen. So I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, crap. That sucks." And then, and then, uh, I, and I, I think I told this story recently, but Jeremy Fox called me, and m my decision basically was between Flip, oh really, and Toy Machine, and he was very, um, you know, very forward with, "We are going to come and annihilate," and I hear you have a strong work ethic, and. I want you to be our first U.S. pro. And I, I was flattered, but I didn't know who he was. I didn't know who Rowley was. I didn't know who Penny was. You know, he told me yeah. the, the roster, you know. And it was, you know, Runa. Runa, Runa <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a, a gnarly, a gnarly, you know, lineup of vert dudes, park dudes. And, you know, it, the funny thing is, he's like, they're already over here. He's like, they're coming. They're already over here. They're, like, annihilating. Like, they're going to kill it. And yeah. I was, he's like, we want you to be a part of it. And I was like you know, very flattered that anybody called me. Cause you know, it's a weird feeling. Like you quit a brand and you, you're kind of, I was starting to get a little bit of like, you know, like, you know, kids knew who I was at demos and stuff. They were starting to, you know, yeah. and um, to not have a sponsor and not really know what's going to work out. It was kind of like, I don't know. Is this like, it, yeah, you know, no, that's weird. That's yeah. And then the you, you called and, 
And um, I talked to all those guys about it. And right when you called me, the ad just came out in Big Brother. And I think it's Ethan Fowler doing a frontside nose slide on a ledge. And then there's like two dudes in the background acting like they're giving each other head. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that ad just came out. And, you know, and at this time, skateboarding was really homophobic, you know. And so you were like really pushing the boundaries, having that. Like, obviously, both people are clothed in the background. But... Yeah. It was like, you know, I think it's like Justin Regan and Jamie Hart. Yeah, it was like it was like dude on dude sexual thing fully clothed in the background. And it was like, you know, kind of gnarly. I think it was yeah. in Big Brother. And um, I remembered, you know, telling Mark Vich and that crew like, hey, you know, I think I might ride for Toy Machine. They're like, did you see Those the new ad? <laughs> did you see the new ad? Like, how could you do that? Like, why wouldn't you ride for Blind or 101? And I remembered the thing that you offered me that stuck out so much. It was like, hey, man, I'm I'm like. You know, I'm super mellow and I just want to, I just want to, you know, work on the art stuff. And if you want to make videos, I hear you're super into making videos and stuff. If you want to make videos, you're free to do it. And if you want to help build a team, you're like, I need all the help I can get. And I, I just remembered that offer was so huge at the time. You know, it was like, you were basically asking me to help you run Toy Machine. And to me, like I'd looked up to you. You fully did. No. And I, I'm just saying, <laughs> I looked up to you for years and to get that type of call, it was like a no brainer. It was like. Yes, like there's not going to be another opportunity like this. And then I talked about this in the Nine Club, but then I went to I went to Tomiato and I met with Todd because you were like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to Europe tomorrow. Go talk to Todd and work it out. <laughs> and you're uh, no, yeah. no, no. And you you were like, you know, just go to Tomiato. Like I don't even know. Like I don't look it up in the phone book or magazine. <laughs> like anyway, I went to Tomiato. I went to Tomiato. I had a meeting with Todd, and I remembered I remembered um, I had my best month ever on Invisible. I talked about this in the Nine Club interview. And, um, and one of the first questions, he's like, yeah, we're really stoked that, you know, you want to be a part of Toy Machine. You know, we think it's cool. Like, you know, what what kind of salary are you looking for? You know, in my best month ever in the world on Invisible, I, one, one month out of like, you know, 12 or 14 months I was pro, I sold $1,200 worth of boards, like royalty. So it was like 600 boards. I sold yeah. $2 each. And I was like, I just like kind of said it like 1200 bucks and he was like okay that's no problem and i was like oh man i could have got one <laughs> yeah probably. anyway he was like really down for it and i was just like oh my gosh like this is such an opportunity i get to ride for this you know ride skate with you on a brand and then my mind just started reeling i was like josh kalis like just thinking of guys that i thought would be sick that were a little bit underappreciated in the industry or like in skating and and that was obviously an, uh, the start of an awesome, you know, kind of like well, era for that's us. That's amazing to hear because I don't think I've heard it in that quite in those terms like that at all. Never. Yeah, it Actually, was an honor. You never told me this, but um, I, and I always, you know, you've probably heard over the years, like I always completely defer everyone, you know, I'm in Welcome to Hell and I'm, and I'm Toy Machine. So everyone thinks like I did this and I always defer. I'm like, I didn't do shit. It was all Jamie. You've probably heard this over the years. I literally am I like, mean, I'm overly. Well, I appreciate it. Because that. it was I mean, you. It was you. That's the thing. That's like, if anything, if like, if Alien wasn't going to sponsor you for whatever reason, you got, you weren't cool enough or something. Like I saw. Definitely was I loved, see, I loved Diamond in the Rough type, type of stuff. Yeah. You know? And you were that for sure. I was like, this guy, there's a potential here. And then if anything, I've always just been wanting to be collaborative with everything. You know, it's like and you totally were. It was yeah, like I was amazing. Like, I have I just I want to just make stuff. Yeah. And do stuff and if and I saw it in you cuz like I have a lazy streak or or I had other interests, you yeah. know, with art and stuff yeah. that I was doing. So the fact that you were just like we're going to do this and like you shaped it up and I loved it. You know, I think everything you said, I was just like, you're right. Let's do it. Like, I, there was no, yeah, no there was no, literally was no it. resistance like, for me about you, anything. Yeah, you I were very think. supportive. You were like, this guy sucks. Let's kick, kick him off. I'm like, you're right. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know, I know. Poor and, uh, Pete Lehman, I, I feel bad. He but, you know, but it's true. Like, you were basically. Pete Lehman killed it, though. Front I mean, heel over the rail. Roosevelt was sick, but sorry. No, it's true, though. Toy Machine Live. Look at Toy Machine Live. It's like, I'm just sitting there dorking around. Yeah. Like, putting whoever in. Oh, your friend has a fucking five minutes let's put it in yeah let's do every wipe known to man on this stupid yeah. editing equipment you know like yeah. it was just like let's just do dorky fun stuff and it was like kind of a little loose and crazy and i think you had been watching these other companies and and you kind of came in with like their standards you know yeah. and i was just like you're right and it's kind of like you opened my eyes conversely you know like to okay there is a standard. We do have to have like some excellence here. Let's let's pick really good skaters and let's do something rad. And so 
you know, everything you said when you were like, okay, let's look at this guy. I was just like, yeah, no brainer. Like everything you did was pretty much, yeah, that's awesome. And that's why when people ask me, oh, welcome hell, I'm just like, I sat back and let Jamie do it. I well, literally, I really it, appreciate that's my credit. That's what I take as my credit. I say my credit. <laughs> you've probably heard this. I haven't, but no, I, I you appreciate have, it. You had to have heard this. I say this like eight times a day. You haven't heard me say this? The, you you take credit in letting me... No, what literally thing? this is the only thing I say about Welcome to Hell. You what? had to have seen it somewhere. Okay, let's anyway, hear it. look, I just say the only credit I can take is that I let Jamie do it. Like, I'll take credit for that. It's my company. I've got this whole vision, but I'm letting someone who I knew was going to do a better job do a better job. That's how I've always been with everything. It's like, hire someone. You know, Todd did it to me. He's, he, yeah. he hired me. He said, you do Toy Machine. I don't want to have any say over it. And he never to this day has told me to do this or that in an ad. It's always been complete creative, creative yeah. control and I love it and I cherish it. And when I saw that you were like, this is how the video needs to be done. This is the standard. You got to get this many good tricks. Like you were crazy about it. Yeah. Here's your list. We got a list. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to fly <laughs> to this place to get this. Like to me, that was, you know, you saw how I worked. I just skated Huntington. Yeah. Like I didn't want to go anywhere. Like you had a, a crazy agenda that helped Toy Machine be better. And like I said, my the only credit I can take is that I saw that in you and well, said, go for it, man. I, I am Completely I am, go for it. I cannot thank you enough because obviously it's the cornerstone of my career. And um, well, yeah, it's the only thing kids say to me, welcome to hell. To this day, I'm shocked. I'm like, how are you like this old now? <laughs> yeah. To this day, I mean, guys on the street downtown are like, welcome to hell. I'm just like, what? Well, that's I like, think from it, 95, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm like, I watching think that, that still. I think that, <laughs> There was there was so much specialness of the time wrapped into it too. The timing of right. it and it when it really we, hit at the perfect moment. Yeah, yeah, and when we made it, the music and all the things that we were doing, all the people that came together for it. You know, obviously the only thing we we're missing was the Muska. It would have been like yeah, you know, amazing, been perfect. Um, you know, and the DVD kind of came out with his part, but it just never was the same. You know, I talked about I talked about that with Chad and um, and you know the podcast we did with him, um, but. It, it was the best opportunity, and I can't thank you enough for the opportunity. And that phone call is where it started. Um, well, I thank you for doing it because, yeah. like I said, I just all I did was say, "This guy's going for it. Let him go." Yeah. And just kind of sat back and let you do it. So how? And this is kind of like kind of plays right into my next question: is is like, was it? I mean, I know it was weird. Like when I left and started kind of focusing on zero, it was kind of like, did you feel like were you? inspired to kind of like take zero i mean not take zero take take toy machine like back under your control and kind of like start with jump off a building because jump off a building is a great video too like the team kind of came together around that time with bam and well, mike and carrie i think i learned a lot from watching you do like you know we we kind of like evolved into a certain set yeah and clearly after you left toy machine went back a little bit into like a little more crazier side yeah you know like I think, jump off a building is like still a really no but without solid restraints video. i i tend to i you know i might tend to get i think i've learned over the years but yeah. I, even at that point it's like it got a little looser and weirder like there was probably a lot of stuff in there that you wouldn't have done for sure yeah you had a you had a very strict standard which was you know obviously yeah a lot of people worse, saw you as I mean, a ball buster but yeah. you know yeah, i got a pretty <laughs> pretty big reputation for that but, but that's you know demanding excellence is like not, not that i don't yeah. see it as that some people appreciate thing. it some people don't at all so yeah, it just depends so, on you know and that, i like i needed that i needed someone to say like that's not up to the standard do something better and i'm like okay you know i'm just that kind of person like yeah. oh that's not good fuck i'll try something else like was you know, was around that time like jump off a building and then slightly after where you kind of started focusing more on like an art career like the thing is, is I've been doing that. I was doing, that's what the thing that people find weird sometimes is because I, I started getting known in the art around that time. Maybe. Yeah, that's kind of what maybe but I, I you know, You've the, been doing the year, art, obviously. The year I turned pro, I started painting. Yeah. So I was painting, like the year I, the year Toy Machine started with Swank, I had my first solo show in New York, 94. Really? Yeah. So I'm like simultaneously doing, like you said. Oh, that was the alleged gallery, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember going there with you. And you probably... That, you know, you said, you mentioned in, when I talked to you, like, go talk to Todd, I'm going to Europe or something. You know, I was doing stuff like that. I mean, yeah. where I was going and doing shows. I mean, I started sh really showing seriously in 94 and also started shooting photos around that time in a serious way. Yeah. And that's, you know, the year we were on, we did a tour that year. Yeah, yeah. And I was probably starting to shoot photos more and more. And 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I was painting since since I turned pro. But it started. You started kind of gaining notoriety in the late '90s, right? Where it yeah, like... I mean, if that was my first like solo show, which is kind of a you know, I had done some group shows before that. There was like a big skateboarding group show that a guy did in Chicago called uh, the Degenerates. It was like uh, that's Don, a cool was name. Gons and Thomas Campbell and like I think I vaguely remember that. Yeah, everyone was in it. Like. Uh, yeah, everybody. Chris yeah, Miller was in it, like, you know, Matt Hensley. Everybody was, wow. and a lot of people were there. And like That's, a, that's kind of a, a, quite a list. You just, yeah, and it was amazing, like, cruising around Chicago with these guys, going yeah. to eat, like, at some diner, you know, with, like, Gons and Matt Hensley. And, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's pretty Guys hard. that, like, knew each other but never, you know, it's, like, weird in skateboarding. You'll, you always see guys at events, like, contests, and you, it's, like, weird to be, like, sitting at a diner in Chicago totally outside of any skate event with yeah. these guys that are so incredible. It's, like, yeah. it's kind yeah, of a different, like, different feeling. Um, like missing Nautis right there. It's like pretty much skate royalty. Yeah. No, I think he was in the show too. I wow. just don't know if he was there. Uh, but um, everybody was in the show. It was it was it was amazing. That's cool. And that was kind of the prototype for that kind of stuff. And then, but you know, yeah, I've been I was showing like pretty consistently through the years. And uh, but it definitely, yeah. I mean, '90s. That one was well, jump off the building '97 or '8. '98. '98. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was like at that point I was doing simultaneously like trying to be a pro skater i mean there was a point where i was doing it all pretty well in yeah. a way. it's like i was succeeding to some extent in art yeah getting shows working with galleries like being represented which is very similar to being sponsored you know it's like they yeah. still have to produce produce and everything um still like doing well in contests and doing demo tours yeah. with my with my team and running the company like yeah. doing the graphics and stuff and helping out with that stuff so juggling that for a long period before i like as I got older, it definitely like art took precedence over some stuff. And I felt like I was actually hurting Toy Machine in some cases where, you know, I had like a really important show for me that you'd have to focus would on end it. up ruining like going on tour. Because right. I, if I wasn't going to drive, then there was no one to do it. That's yeah. when I had to like, fi- hire a team manager to actually start. That was the early 2000s kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember when, when like, you know, we're talking about Toy Machine a lot, but you know, when Bam and BA and Alyssa left, and I remember, like, kind of, like, shedding a tear a little bit. Like, I always had, like, a soft spot for Toy Machine in my heart, you know? Like, the fact that you'd give me the opportunity that you'd given me and that I had, you know, I, I ended my time on Toy Machine. And I only wrote for Toy Machine for two and a half years, which is crazy. We did a lot in two and a half years. So short. Yeah. Weird. And there was, like, a little, you know, <clears throat> I did that. You had that ad, 50-50 in that long rail. And there was like a rail next to it. Yeah, and I drew, drew a little guy it. with yeah, a toy yeah. shirt on. Yeah, yeah. You had a zero I had a shirt zero on. Idea. I was kind of like, what the fuck? It's like a toy with a zero shirt. Because you had always said like, it's just going to be clothing. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know, Don't inevitable. worry about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Totally inevitable. But um, Alpha I, dogs have to have to like, have to let them go at some point. Yeah. I mean, we, I talked about that with Muska too. He's like, I kind of felt like, like that was always going to be Ed's brand. And you and I were there, but we were eventually going to outgrow that being writing for his brand. And we're going to need to go do our own thing. Yeah. Um, but, no, for sure, and I kind of saw that. It hurts at the time, but yeah. it's, like, but it's I, like natural. It's like you see it and go, okay, yeah, yeah. it's going to happen. Like, yeah. So you're not I, that bummed about it? I remember... I you remember, weren't an asshole about it or anything? You know? I mean, I remember it was at a trade show, though, and I remember it was it was sad. I remember telling you and like you tearing up and it being like a really bummer. Like and You're like, I just need one more part. We need one more part out of you. And I'd already kind of made the decision you know, that I was moving on and I was going to do zero and I was going to ride for it. And it was really hard for me to already have made the decision before I told you, you know. Yeah. Um, and that's always tough. I mean, you always got to ask. I usually, when someone quits now, I ask you, I ask them, like, is your decision made up? Or is this, like, you discussing your thoughts on it? You yeah. know, if they say it's made, then it's kind of like, you know, it's a done deal. But at any rate, I remember being very sad for Toy Machine, hearing the news of, you know, Bam, Carrie, Mike, and Alyssa gone. It was tough. Yeah. yeah and I, Super I tough. went... To Tomietto and got a box. Of, I mean, actually, I think I was still getting. I mean, we were still involved with Tomietto, but I just remember started writing toy boards because I had a nose grab blunt slide on a like a rail in San Diego, and I remember like I just wanted to get a photo on a toy machine board. I wanted everyone in the world to know that I backed toy machine, and I think that my gesture of it like was probably pretty good, but it was just really I just wanted you to feel like I had your back, and and I. I just remember being sad because I was still like, you know, very nostalgic. It had only been three or four years, but yeah. I don't know. And anyway, I always have t- told anybody out if my career, you know, if zero ever goes away, I'm going to be on flow and time machine. Like <laughs> well, if, if Leo will have me. Yeah. 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 That was, well, that, I don't know. For me, that was a, 
a weird crushing period. Yeah. Um, I remember talking to you and that was, I think that was the part that a super downer, yeah. but at the same time, like not burning bridges with anyone. I've been pretty good at that over my whole career. It's like, yeah. it's like, it, I think the, the one tenet is like, we're just here to have fun and like, yeah. let's, I never want to be that serious about like a, a thing like skateboarding, which I just love is a thing I love and I don't like the business side of it's weird. So, you know, when you, if someone comes to me and says, I don't want to do this anymore, then I'm just like, well, ideally I'm your friend first and I want you to be stoked. So yeah. just go then, you know, it's like, I'm just, I'm bummed, but I'm not like, fuck you, man. I don't want to talk to you again. Yeah. Like that. It's like, so even when my whole team quit, it was like amiable in a way. Like yeah. they quit and they're like, sorry, Ed, but we're quitting. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, okay, bros. Like this sucks, yeah. but see you around. Like, well, it, you know? it also, it also opens an opportunity for the next generation. I mean, and your next generation came in hot, you know, Harmony, Leo, those guys came yeah. in. Yeah, and a lot of that stuff. Billy, like, Billy's like parts, like you know, the suffer the joy, like yeah, really nice. I just, I feel like a lot of that stuff just fell in my lap. I think having that this mindset of being open to people and weirdness and the butcher, just picking. Yeah, the butcher like, kind of came in with some momentum. Like I, like yeah, I mean, lead. all these guys. I mean, yeah. Diego is someone that a lot, probably a lot of companies would be like, this guy's weird. He's like. From Argentina, he's like one of these like so, yeah, so motivated, was like a pseudo Brazilian, one of those Brazilians yeah, yeah. that everyone was kind of like weird out about. But like we went on tour with them, and I like being on tour with them was like awesome, and yeah, he's, he's so, so funny and rad. And I was just like, yeah. you know, like we're the kind of company that would just sponsor this guy. Like, yeah. fuck, why not the butcher? Like, yeah. he's awesome. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? I love that era of Tommy Machine. And too. I felt I like we could part. take someone and like play to their strengths. Like, yep. that's what I was always about. Like, who's yeah. got a personality that I can like use in an ad or yeah. like play up in a video? Like. Cause that's what's weird about that's what's great about skateboarding is that it's just a bunch of weirdos. We're all and that's what you feel like. Toy Machine is is a way to highlight all of those. Yeah, it's just quirks. Like, it's just yeah, we're all dorks together. Let's be dorks. That's kind of what it is. Like you know, it's like there's no pretense of like let's we're cool guys or something. And, you know, it's just like I don't know. Cause it's never I don't know my for my generation that's never what it was about. Yeah, we were always just about like looking I, at I think Neil that's great. And I Gons think and those guys and it was all about like. Just being funny. And I think dorky. Toy Machine is refreshing in skateboarding, and I think there's always been a place for it, and I think people have enjoyed that, and that's why it continues to, you know, do what it does. And but wh what do you think that your personal place is now? Like, you know, you're you're obviously, you know, you're painting more, skating yeah, less. Yeah. Like, what do you think that, in like, you know, like in in skateboarding, is it like, do you feel like? being like still pro and or like painting or like what do you think your contribution like how do you think about how do you how do you um this is a hard the hardest thing to navigate honestly i don't i think i think as people who live their whole life as a pro skater you know having this like fame in a microcosm of a skateboard world where you're a big celebrity in that world but walking down the street no one gives a fuck of who you are at all yeah you know what i mean so there's yeah. that how do you like transition out of that or how does that how does that light i mean there's people that do it like heath where it's just like a light switch no and, and for me it's been organic and slow like everything i do you know it just kind of like slowly happened i broke my leg you know five years ago four yeah four you think that was kind ago. of a turning point for you like with skating oh that was for sure like it in a way it like i thought you. it wasn't going to be but it kind of ended up being you know yeah like the first like i'm laying on the ground and i'm thinking like i'm just going to start surfing yeah, really? I still haven't, but I, that, that was my plan. <laughs> that was my plan on the ground, laying there with my foot broken. Arto's like trying to lift my, like, see if it's broken. And I'm just like, dude, it's flopping there. And in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna, that's, that's it. I'm going to surf now, man. I'm just going to be that guy who's like surfing every morning. But I'm what made you think that you wanted to surf? Because you wanted the feeling, but. You know. No, I just was like, that'll just be my thing I do, like, instead of skateboarding. Yeah, how come you haven't done it yet? I don't know. I'm too lazy. I'm not a morning person. You got to get up early. <laughs> And, I, and, and the other thing is that, like, the things that I was juggling, like, the void the void that being a pro skater, like, the time and effort that went into being a pro skater, which was, like, real spotty at the end, you know? Yeah. Like, I would come in and out and was lucky a lot of times, like, you know, not skate for three months and then show up and, like, actually, all my demo moves are there and I could, like, yeah. rip a demo still and at least hang with the guys, you know? Like, at yeah. least feel like I was hanging, you know, at, at age 40 or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, still relatively hanging with the guys in a demo. And the the injury I had was was one of those. It was just my luck ran out because yeah. you know it's not good to like not literally not skate for three yeah. months or five months. It, it's not if and then it's show when. up and try yeah. to like rip a demo, 
And that's exactly what happened. I just like got in over my head on something that would be totally basic any other time. I was like yeah. bump to bar, you know, pyramid with a flat bar, nose grinding it. And just, I don't even know what happened. I florfed out and put my foot down in a weird way on the bank and just the bones, the two bones twisted in a weird way. And I just, as soon as my weight hit, like I just felt it fracture. explode. Yeah, just yeah. both of them just shattered, you know, it was just really bad. And, uh, but the void, like I said, the void from that, like the, just instantly was filled. Like all this art stuff was happening, like, you know, toy machine, like obviously the, ever since 2008 when the financial crisis hit, like yeah. the first thing that happened is Todd called me and said, no more outside artists, we can't afford anything, you know? So from 2008 till now, I've been doing like all the graphics, wow. literally all, like I used to hire friends, like do, you know, hey, artist guy, do a series for us or something, you know, Margaret Kilgallen, Chris Johansson, like yeah. Thomas Campbell, whoever, like do, do a series for us and like Foss. that that had to stop. Like, yeah. So I had to do everything and I like, that was the gauntlet for me of like learning how to do graphics really well. Like I felt, you I had feel to, more like, competent than ever like as a graphic designer. Like, yeah, you, you had to become really efficient in order to yeah, do that Yeah, you can do graphics. that and you have to pump them out. So the yeah. whole output for the year is all on my shoulders to do. Um, so yeah, the void was just filled and that's what it, that's why I didn't end up surfing or skating or anything. I just ended up doing more painting and more photography and doing more books. Book offers started coming my way and just that, that void got filled. But there's a weird pressure from skateboarders about. You think you think it's like you think skateboarding is putting that pressure on you, or you think that you just kind of feel it? Because I would never ever think like it's a little bit of both. I would like never. Ever asked, what was your first question though? Like, well, what's my place now? Like, how? Yeah, no, where like where do you see your place in skateboarding now? That's that's I kind of said it in a crappy way. No, I don't know I where I see. That's the thing. It's like because I mean, I mean, there's you can judge a little bit from social media, let's say, or people you meet on the streets, right? And I get like, thank you for what you've done for skateboarding. I'm just like, whoa, that's heavy. Like, I've done something for skateboarding. It's like, you know, a lot. Well, of, you I know, like... I know. Like, so, so basically, what I can glean is that for a lot of people, I represented like this artsy side, <clears throat> this um, anti-homophobic, whatever. Um, like, I, vegan. So I contributed. I contributed in that way, and people are thanking me for it. It feels weird because I don't feel like I did anything. Yeah. Extraordinary. I just yeah. like lived, and made some decisions, and like fumble through it like anyone else is fumbling through it yeah but you're so, pretty vocal about a lot of things you know no, like, and that's and that's fine you know, and i'll take whatever credit but i'm just saying that i just don't know where i sit now it's like it's i, I don't know how to explain it i guess i mean i mean the transition from like having that identity is like i mean like i said there was a point when i was juggling both like i'm a, i'm doing these shows i'm having an exhibition at a legit gallery like a legit art world type of thing and in the, my head, I'm like, I can lip slide a fucking 20 stair if I want right now. You know, like I, and there's that skateboard identity that you have that. You think you can? No, I can't now. Oh. But I mean, I, well, it, I could. It's just confidence. Yeah. But I don't have that confidence anymore. Or that, that lip slide was beautiful. The tail breaker. I love it. Yeah. That. Well, that was a 20. But anyway. um, you know, I, I'm just saying like I had that like that back pocket thing of like, I don't know what it is. A superiority feel complex of like, like as a skateboarder, you just feel like badass. You know, I'm like I'm at an art show, looking at all these people in suits, looking at my art, and I, in my head, I'm just like, I I can go Smith a rail. How yeah. fucking rad is that? Like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like what you I mean. I'm legitimately you, this guy. You over have here. something else. Yeah, I have yeah. this thing that's that's real over here that I've like legitimately like done the, already. And the card in your back. I don't know how to explain it, but it's yeah. just like a feeling of like you know, like a skater has like there's just like coolness to that. Like yeah, I do. I you know, I don't know. And do you have any desire? Like, you can skate now, right? Like, you're, you're healthy enough I to... I roll around a little bit, but I just, like, I need to... I just don't... So I... what would it take? What would it take for you to skate in your mind? Like, would, you, would it be, like, a project? Would it be you getting motivated for a reason? Would it be filming something? Or would it just be just cruising around? I just need to go out and do it. You know? This is the thing that... I, I don't know if Muska was talking... You mentioned Muska said something, but... It is hard for me to be at the level I'm at now... And it's a catch-22 because the level I'm at now is probably because I haven't practiced and, like, gone out as much. Like, the more you stop, the more you lose it really it quick, yeah. right? So I'm at that zone. And so going to places is really tough because I'm like, I see something that I know I can do. And then you can't. You physically can't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, so in my head... I'm because like, it's been too long. Kind of. And it's hard to, like, jive those two together. Like, you know, I mean, I, I, I have go to a too. place and I'm like, okay... 
you know, like you said, right yeah. when you walk up, you are like see a spot, you're like, this is what I know I can do. Yeah. But what I know I can do is like Ed Templeton, the pro skater from 95 and not Ed Templeton, the 45 year old washed up dude or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like, so I go there and I'm like, I can't, I can't even do that. And then you get really frustrated because you like are scared to even try. And it's just, For so sure. Weird. I mean, you, you have to, I, I have to anyway, I have to lower my standards and kind of get back on the horse, you know, and like, and then and that's what I haven't done really. Yeah, Cause like I said, yeah. the void is I have filled to, with like, I have so much to do every day. Like, but you know, it happens like, pretty quick. I know, and I need not, to make that time if I really yeah. was dedicated, but that's the thing. Maybe I'm not dedicated. That's, yeah. and that's the thing that's hard to admit Yeah. because I feel like that in skateboarding, like I was that kid, like, fuck you. If you don't skate, you know, I'm going to skate forever. I'm going to, you yeah. know, you just go till you're dead. Yeah. And here I am at a it's zone funny, where I'm like, like, I, think that but no and that's i struggle with it we all too, do though. it you know so when i like show up and my team is at a place and, I, and they're like hey Ed, have you been skating it's like really hard for me to get the words like no i ha- i haven't been skating that's so hard to say yeah around a group of skaters because i know they're all looking at you like they get that little glaze over like weird you know it's like you know and they, yeah. i don't think they're like fuck this guy but they're no. probably like because they have uh, respect they have respect for you because, and uh, and you say earlier you don't know what you've done but You've had an, an awesome career. You've made. You've had a company. You've created. You've left a you know a fingerprint on skateboarding. Yeah, no, and and I, it's awesome. And I and I feel that from people, and that's what I mean. It's like hard for me to handle. I mean, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I was put into the skate hall of fame, which is just insane. I got the Legend Award from Transworld. And yeah, both those are awesome. It's just like yeah, wow. It's like I don't even know how to handle that. And uh, but I'm not. You know, it'd be like naive for me to say like I don't see. Yeah, what yeah. I did. That's yeah, like I do. Yeah. I do see it, but at the same time, it's like I don't. But it's like well, there's a part where you just don't feel like you deserve it because you're not skating anymore. I know, but I. That's see... the hard part. It's like yeah. I don't physically skate now, and so then I just don't deserve it. Like because I always felt like once you're done, you're done. I like I like the idea that like once I'm done, I'm done. You're just gone, and no one cares about you anymore. <laughs> like you just are out. But and you haven't done that. And that doesn't really. That you think hasn't really you think happened. because Toy Machine is so a part of you, that's why. I guess so. I don't know. That's what I mean. I don't really understand. It's like, I still put it this way, like toy machine. It's a day job. It pays the bills, put it that way. You know, there's like that way to put it, but I could not do it and live. Yeah. And the reason I do do it is because I care so much about the people that arrive for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it would be easy for me to walk away and just say, I'm going to do art now and let someone else do Toy Machine or something or whatever, yeah. just walk away from it. But I just, like, there's something in me that won't do that. Yeah. Like, I still want to do it. I could see that. And it's hard to, like, deal with, like, not being a skater uh, physically now, like, being a pro skater, you know, like, but I'm, like, open. I don't know. It's just weird because I'll do a board with, if I, like, see, have a graphic that I think is kind of cool, I'll just, like, do one for myself. Like, hey, there's an Ed board because they still sell. Of course they sell. But I, but I feel guilty doing it because it's like, wait, I don't really deserve a pro board because I'm not really skating. Well, I mean, it's like Lucero has a board, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a certain well, people... then I go through that and then I just get, you know, I get to the point where it's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. It's kind of... I guess like no one's going to like say anything it's to kind me. Of, it, so it's just... kind of similar to the way you turned pro where it wasn't on purpose. You're not, not, you're not, you're, <laughs> yeah. not, you're not retiring yourself on purpose either. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, it's kind of your style of doing things. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. And I, I by no means, am judging you. I think no, you've I... been an amazing ambassador for skateboarding, amazing ambassador for art and skateboarding and the culture and all of it. And I love seeing you in interviews and I love seeing you. And I, I would love to see you skate. But at the same time, I, I understand it. You know, I, I work a full time job and, you know, I have three kids and I, I see the challenges. And a lot of times I get to the skate park and sometimes when I take my board out of the, out of the trunk, I set it on the ground and I'm like, do I have anything today? You know, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to push around and see where it goes. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, most times, nine out of 10 times, I start getting sparked one little thing at a time. And then the next thing I know, I'm jumping down the stairs or jumping on the hub just because I want to, yeah. I want to feel that, that living. But there's a bunch of tricks that I think like, oh, I used to be able to do this. I haven't done this in a really long time. And are like, how much time do I have? Like, oh, I'm just going to stick yeah. with my favorite moves. But you still rip, like legitimately rip. I mean, I tried it. Like, that's what I, tr- I lost at some point. Like, I, you know, I, like I said, I, even if I went three months, I could get out of the car and sit and legitimately rip still. But now I'm at a phase where it's like, I've got, I've let it go way too far yeah. where I can't legitimately rip. Like, I can feeble a curb, you know, I can board slide a curb, but like, I'm physically scared 
Yeah. And the confidence has gone to like even do stuff I used to be able to do. Like all I into a nose blunt is like on a bank or something. With I mean, I've, scale, you know? I, I'll admit I've lost a lot of things that used to f- seem like very basic for me. They're just completely gone. And I work, I have to work at it. You know, I have to work at yeah. skateboarding. Well, that's to what like, it's like. Everything it takes yeah. effort and yeah, like, yeah, practice. Yeah. And that's what I haven't given it at this point in my, in my life. You know, I, I tell people that I made a decision in a way like at age 40 with a broken leg. Like I kind of just realized I'm not going to, keep up with the guys anymore because there was kind of like a, a semblance of that like i'm still kind of keeping up if i really needed to i might be able to make a that's, video part. that's funny i, I but I, then uh, you know i think i just realized like at, i'm not going to recover from this and still even be able to hang so and i kind of don't want to try i guess that was that yeah. was part of it was like i just yeah, have yeah, other no. stuff to do now i understand that and i i don't feel like i can hang with the guys anymore either but now i basically I'm trying to come up with my own challenges. And for me, a lot of it is just trying to do the things I used to do. Like that's like the yeah. thing. And then I also realized that at this age, the good the good thing is is that no one expects anything of you anymore. They're like anybody over 40, like, you know, if you're not a vert skater and you're not like one of those legend dudes that just seem to like be able to continue to, you know, cab, you know, Lance, yeah. Chris Miller, those guys that just, you know, Tony. Um, I feel like no one expects anything, so you can kind of I just can't believe how good Chris Miller is. I know. But you like, can... he's like the guy that I when I first started as a little kid, that was my archetype, Chris Miller. Like I there was a That's sure a good video one. and he was in it and that was the guy. Well, like before Gons that... and stuff and he's still the guy. Yeah. After yeah, I'm amazing. done, I like came and went and yeah. got put in the Hall of Fame and he still kills it. <laughs> it's yeah. so weird. I saw him at this I saw him at our local park the other day and yeah. And my my youngest son was like drop like getting himself revved up to drop in on the at the bowl and he had no idea who Chris was and Chris was doing like five foot ollies over the hip and it was just so beautiful. That's just insane. Yeah. Okay. He's, I, he's I, awesome. I went off on a tangent. No, that's okay. Um I guess what I'm saying is is that no one expects anything anymore. That's something that I've started to embrace a little bit and so like people you, say we just want to see you skate man, totally and, and, it, all. and it really is true you could do a front feeble on a curb a slappy front feeble on a double-sided curb that ended and if there was a photo of that people would be absolutely juiced and that wouldn't take you barely have to break a sweat for that <laughs> no i mean i i've i've embraced that to some extent now i'm kind of like we're making a video a toy machine mm-hmm. video now and i'm like in my head i'm like you know what i gotta go out and get some tricks at least even if they're that not was good. suffer the joy you had first part uh, good and evil. Good and evil. Yes. Good and evil. That was really yeah, good. I, like I love that first part thing. I thought that was really like kind of like out of nowhere. <laughs> and I thought about like you know we're working on a new zero video right now. Before credits, I was like, put me before the credits. Yeah. Even, so. Yeah. So it's like it's like zero expectations at that point, and then yeah. you just get surprised by whatever footage you have. I thought about like ripping that for the new zero video, um, but now that I've talked about it, I can't do it. Yeah. I, I I just want to be in the video at this point. Like I want to have a part, and I'm kind of going back to my old like systems of like you know how much time do I have, how many tricks can I get per week, you know, and kind of make it happen. And um, but then I got hurt like the third week, hurt my knee, tweaked my knee, and now I'm kind of like nursing it back to health and trying to get back out there. But that's you know. part of my fear with this is the 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 doctor basically said if you're gonna skate again you need to come and get one of these plates taken out because there's two there's a plate on either bone each bone going down mm-hmm. and that kind of freaked break me it out. above it or something yeah he's like oh you will he's like there's no flex there so if you land weird it's just going to break right above it but you can keep so it low like, impact he's like though. you got to take one out but i was you're like the, screw that no the hard part was like what's your definition of like yeah. skating like you know what i mean He's like, if you're gonna go hard, I'm like, well, what's your what's going hard to you? Like, what go, four you know? stairs, seven stairs? What yeah, are we talking what are we, about? Yeah, what are we talking about here? I didn't understand. Like, so so that that's the doubt in my head is like, yeah. is he talking like any skating is like I'm gonna break it right above it or whatever? But yeah, I've been. That's what I mean. Part of me just takes it pretty easy now because I'm like, yeah. I'm a little afraid of that. I've done a couple of tricks where like I twisted it in a weird way, and it starts like really tripping out. Like it's a weird feeling I've never felt before, yeah. and that kind of scares me. Like, whoa. You know, so there's just being a wuss, getting fat and old, and fucking turning into a wuss, man. I mean, it happens. In skate man. terms, you know, because like happens, yeah. everyone still has that like skate, like you still have that skate rat mentality of like, don't be a puss about stuff. 
Yeah, no, I inevitably I, you become a pussy. And I and I that's my my um, whole go, goal when I go to the skate park when I make it there is that I want to push myself to where I'm a little bit scared or I feel a little bit uncomfortable. That's what I try and do every day. And it, and I don't push it too far, you know, because I don't want to yeah. get hurt at a skate park and I want to keep skating and filming and doing whatever I can do. But I think that that's kind of the goal is to like push myself to the point where I feel a little uncomfortable and just kind of stay. Yeah. Well, you know, you've there. always been super driven. Like yeah, the, I mean, I, I, the drive you have is like different than my drive. Well, I mean, your drive. I mean, I have this really yeah. long term drive. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. I've noticed this about myself. It's like a. It's very methodical. I just keep doing what I do, and that's just like to me. It's just about putting stuff down and just keep going, you know. Yeah. And over time, I know it's gonna like add up to something, but I don't like have this like immediate drive. Like I'm gonna do this tomorrow. Ah. <laughs> Well, well, I, see, it, I see that in you a little more. Yeah. At least, I, no, I used to I, see it. You know, like, I, I like you do. decide, and like, and that's it. And like, yeah. I don't have that. It's just like I'm just I don't have it as much anymore. <laughs> I mean, I've, 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 you know, I've gotten softer as well, and I don't have that ability to, you know, just say I'm going to do something and see it through. You know, I, I can't. I get to spots often and can't pull the trigger, and you know, kind of can't make it happen. As you get older, it's just like, you know, there's, there's the fear of you know, injury and self-preservation and all those things kick in. And then doubt, self-doubt is probably the biggest contributing factor to really it's jacking you up. the biggest thing to anything. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Um, but if you skate every day and you can kind of keep that, you can keep that at bay. I, I, I realized, day, I was trying, trying to explain to now. someone recently about skating that 18 stair at Franklin mm -hmm. where I snapped my board that day. I was a little older then. Yeah. You know, but I'm going there with Roly and Arto. Yeah. Arto's like the young phenom. He's just like yeah. feebling it, no problem. And uh, that was a real like make or break moment for me because I had broken my neck like a, you know, a couple less than before. a year ago oh, yeah. or something. Yeah. And like, and uh, was trying to film. So I'm like, here, and it, it, you have to convince yourself you're. You've done this more than anybody going up to big rails and stuff, but I never did that crazy of big rails or anything yeah. in my life. Like, but I remember having to convince yourself that you have to like the confidence is. It's not. It's the physicality's there, which I knew, but you. It's hard to convince yourself that you have that physicality. Yeah, I don't know how to explain that. No, but, I mean I saw. You know, so that. I was really. I literally was rolling up to that thing and going. I don't care anymore. Cause I thought I was gonna die for a second, you know. Like, <laughs> you know, you're going up to this thing that's scary, and you're just and you just override it. Yeah. And the people who can override it. Yeah, they do the normal stuff. And then some people can override it to the point where like, they know how to get out of it. Yeah. If they mess up, and the conf so and I've been in that zone a couple times in my life where I'm like so confident, and that's why you can just do anything because it's yeah. just like you know how to do it. You yeah. know how to fall. You know how to get out of the situation. Yeah. So people see it as crazy, but. But I remember at that point, I was, like I said, I had been recovering from an injury and I'm being pressured by, like, okay, you're here. Fucking Sturt's here. <laughs> you know, Roly's filming over here. Arto's just treating it like nothing. It's like, and I, it's funny because I probably wasn't even that old. I was like, what, 28 or 29 or something. But yeah. it felt I mean, old. it's kind of older to step to something like that in your it, career. It felt though. older at that point, you know? But yeah. Yeah, overriding it and just yeah. going for it is like crazy because it's just like, ah. I don't yeah, know. I mean, that feeling usually is, for me, it always was fear versus confidence. And when you've properly prepared and you have the confidence right. to overcome the fear, all the fear, yeah, it overcomes the fear. And but, I've, and. But it usually has to do with preparation. Like, how many, how many. 14s or 15s have you skated that right so that, you know what yeah you know what's gonna happen yeah you have all those those factors figured out yeah um, and, and that's really you know, the only thing that could be wrong is if you mess up on the ollie which is pretty rare it is rare it happens it happens <laughs> like if you hit the rail you're fine yeah if you all if you mess up on the ollie to the rail you're fucked yeah and that's real <laughs> usually it's a choking thing like if you just completely just botch it and just kind of yeah. kind of choke at from the gates and i've done that before which is really weird like i've, I've done it before on front boards i mean that big white rail and um and dying to live where i walk backwards down the rail um and it's insane like i don't know what happened i just like blanked out and next thing i knew my board wasn't there it was really weird yeah. but it happens sometimes but you know but the feeling before that like welcome to hell days the confidence is so high you're just i remember doing that double 50 line mm -hmm. at UCI. Yeah. I mean, we're just toying with rails. But it was that just because sucked. it, 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 was like it all came down. And stuff. Yeah, like, it all came down to repetition, though. Yeah, you yeah. took an early slam on that rail. 
But it all came down to repetition. Like every day we were skating rails. It was just yeah. like that was the norm. And yeah. when something becomes the norm, I mean, that's just like anything. Anybody that's pushing anything anywhere, they're doing it at such a level of repetition, whether it be gymnastics or any kind of sport, you know, really. Well, they and they talk about this, and skateboarders have the same thing where it, uh, you're able to slow down everything. Yeah. Like skating a rail like that size, it's all it happens in slow motion. Yeah. It's not fast. It feel it looks fast when you see it, but in your head, you're it's all just like I got this. Like every little part of it is yeah. totally in slow mo, and you've yeah. just got it. No, it's a, that's it's amazing a, feeling it, to have that. It is. I haven't had it that. I've many heard times, other athletes but... talk about it too, or like yeah. they, it's like they call it the zone or whatever. You're in the yeah. zone, and you it, it's like the matrix or something. And yeah, you're so it in slows tune. down, and you're like, you're see, so yeah, you need to see it yeah. all. Like, like, I don't know. So it's kind of fun to like, even as a weird skater who never approached it as an athlete in any way, <laughs> could like have experienced that zone. It's yeah. pretty, pretty rad. That's cool. <laughs> well, what is next? What's next for you? I see the books. You're, you're posting books on Instagram. Oh yeah, we were. We started talking about this, and then we thought we should save it for the podcast. So, yeah. uh, so 1994, I started shooting photos in a serious yeah. way. The first thing that inspired me to start shooting was skateboarders. Like the fact, like it kind of hit me. I've been four years into being a pro skater, getting to travel the world, skating, getting paid to skate, you know, which is amazing in itself. It's like that, it hit me four years in that I'd been wasting four years of not documenting this. Like the people I was around. Yeah. I was never the partier, you know, I was yeah. always like the sober guy or whatever. Yeah. And uh, So it gave you something to do at all these events. It gave me something to do, but I also was like always felt a little on the outside. Yeah. You know, I was like kind of watching this with a bemused sort of like, yeah. you know, fascination. Here's these kids yeah. and they're partying, and it's like, you know, from a little bit of a, like a wiser, older guy sort of stance, you know, in, mm -hmm. a, in a way. Because I had been skating for so long, like I was always the older guy trying to, you know, on the team. The responsible guy drive you know i had to get these guys yeah, to the yeah. demo the next morning it was my responsibility so it's like whatever so there's that aspect of it but so yeah i always felt a little on the outside so shooting that and then you know as the years built up and i was just shooting skaters not really thinking that this was going to be something later on you know i don't know how long it took before i realized like oh this is a project like i didn't realize i was like doing a project on skateboarders in a way and obviously i was shooting other stuff too like other street photos as we cruised around but like documenting skating, skaters and what they did. Uh, not the skating, not the act of skating, but just the lifestyle. Yeah. The van life, the waiting, the in-between, the, you know, here Hotels, we are. Hotels, whatever. Here we are in yeah. Memphis, Tennessee, what are we going to do until yeah. it gets dark so we can skate this spot or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, just documenting that stuff. And you, you were around that. Obviously, yeah. I was shooting photos. I have a photo of you trying to squeeze a loaf into a hotel drawer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I don't think you actually got out. I didn't. I just peed, kinda, I peed in the drawer. So I have this like photo of you that makes you look like maybe a bad person in a way, like leaving a yeah. turd on the, in, for this maid. But you didn't actually do it. We yeah. actually fished one of Satma's out and put it in there. <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And then we had to make a run for it. We kind of... We did happened. because they'd called the police and we'd... <laughs> I don't know. I just remember... We had... I remember hotel... Like There's some of them on film too where there's like... We're getting like chased out of the hotels like because we had sleep too late or yeah. whatever. and we, That's what happened on that we, one. Yeah, we, we, we asked for a late checkout, and they yeah. kept banging on the door starting at 8. We were All of us were so pissed. Yeah, I think we checked in at 5 that morning. Yeah, so yeah. we're like, we need to sleep later, you know? Yeah, and, like, yeah. and they just, the maids started bugging us, and then... It was probably 11, not 8. But yeah, yeah they, they did start... And there's a, you know, that stuff still happens, kind of. I mean, we plan it out a little more now. We kind of book our hotels, and we don't like, you know, because, you know, you can be shut out not planning a hotel and drive to a city and there's nothing there and you got the whole team and you're just you're just a dumbass. Oh, I've done that tons of times. Yeah, you're a dumbass. Slept like, nowhere on yeah, tour. Yeah. Slept in the van a couple times. Yeah. Um, it's a bummer. But so yeah, documenting that stuff and so now after all these years, it's coming it's finally coming to a head. It's like it's been a book project in my head forever. Like, okay, I'm gonna make like my book. Like this is mm -hmm. my life's work book. Like I spent my whole life being a pro skater, shooting this from the inside out. You know, other photographers would, would dream of like going, picking a subject and being like that inside of whatever thing you want to shoot. Mm -hmm. Like I'm the guy, I'm like physically the pro skater myself doing yeah. this stuff, you know? So, which kind of hobbled me in a way too, because I had to like do the demo and yeah. see all these crazy kids I wanted to shoot or things happening. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, 
trying to do my I job. remember you going, like, oh, I, sh- I wish I'd have shot that. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah, probably all the time. Yeah. So it's finally coming to head. There's, I think I have a museum in San Francisco, this photography museum called Pier 24 that is interested in perhaps doing it. Kind of waiting on some people to okay it. And, and so the book or the this show? Be, no, this will be a show now too. Okay. So at one point it was a, it was just going to be a book, but then I started realizing like this could be a show. I think it'd be, you know, for a museum to like show this would be really popular. Yeah. It's like definitely going to hit everyone. Like museums need to get people in the doors. They need, you know, younger people to see their shows. This is like the perfect thing. It's like. Yeah. And when you, would the book launch at the show to kind of like. Basically, yeah. yeah. So the show, the museums are so far ahead that they're saying maybe we can do this in 2020. So I'm kind of like, I think the book would come in 2020 with the wow. show. And the show ideally would travel to some other, some venues. So it wouldn't just be like one spot. It would wow, go really across cool. the country, go to Europe. I have a museum in Europe. So this is kind of like the equivalent to like a video part. Like this is your opus. This is For like, me, yeah, yeah. This is like the thing I've been working on for, yeah. for a long time. It's like, so yeah. I'm mining my journals. So it's more than a video part. You remember part. on tour, I'd always like have my my sketchbook and like yeah. stuff and yeah, yeah. stuff. So. It doesn't have as much cool stuff as you would think. I was kind of just writing, like, went here, ate this. Like, it's not, like, philosophical stuff like, Jamie was a dick today. Or, you know what I... Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's just what you pull out of your head. Yeah. No, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, stuff like that where I was, like, I'm describing... You know, it was literally... It's pretty dry stuff, you know, but... It, but there are some, like, stories about, like, this this or that happened. Yeah, crazy or the cops or, so. or drawings yeah. or me with long nipples. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm mining my sketchbooks. I'm like really trying to pull everything together to make this like a really collagey sort of cool. That's exciting, man. Photo book, but it's a legit photo book, you know. I think um, Aperture, this like company Aperture, is interested in publishing it. So it'll be like kind of a major move for me, like a, to have this show, like a show, traveling. And Are you going to continue to contribute to it over the next two years, or is it kind no, of I've, done? No, it's kind of like I, I realize that anything I shoot now is sort of like weird at this point. Yeah. So it does kind of end in like 2000. It's kind of more like there's going to be a peer book someday too or something. Oh, like yeah. I have that. a lot of, tons of other books planned. Yeah. <laughs> but for this one, like this is the one like, yeah. you know, really, this is kind of why I started shooting. And so it's that's exciting, man. That's, that's super exciting. And there's like, right. you know, the photo of you with your swollen up face. Like, you know, it's like. Thank you for letting the guys at Stray use that, by the way. Yeah. It's just funny to me, like how these photos that, I mean, it's kind of a crappy photo. It's a little blurry. It's a little soft, but it yeah, becomes... No one's, no one's judging because of that, yeah. No, but it becomes somehow because of that famous slam. It's like the last slam in Welcome to Hell. Yeah. You lost your tooth. Yeah. I yeah. remember picking your tooth up and going, here's your tooth, man. Yeah, I was out of it. Is that man. that tooth still? Yeah. I never got it fixed. So, yeah, there's your marker right there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you were only saved because your beanie actually scraped Yeah, my beanie down. slid and I slid on my beanie on my face. Yeah. I mean, I had some... No, you were fucked up, but yeah, it was like... it wasn't as bad as it should have been. It could have been a lot yeah, worse. my whole face should have been grinded off. Yeah, Yeah, I sure. just slid like a dead guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like on my hands. But we, wa- you... we watched the other day in slow-mo, <laughs> in like frame by frame. Yeah. And I, I put it on my Instagram story and and we were actually thinking about using that for a zine cover, but it just ended up not panning out. Just it's so cool with failure in the background and stuff. But... um. You know, I mean, that photo just was like a thing. You're just documenting it. But then because the video became such a big yeah. thing and that... and that, so I just look like a freaky skeleton, too. It's like a freaky... was so pivotal. Like, yeah. that photo ends up taking this cool kind of new thing. And, like, and the, you know, the hotel drawer thing, which is kind of a funny story in a way. It's, like, yeah. not even real. It's, like, you're not even... You're, like, trying to get one out yeah, kind yeah. of jokingly, but you didn't. Yeah. So... You know, you can't be held accountable for that. But it's just kind of funny. Just I mean, I don't what mind skaters anyway, do. But, no, yeah. I mean, I, I know. It's like, yeah. I have some funny... I have a photo of your dick somewhere. I bet. From Sweden. Or no, Norway. <laughs> <laughs> I only cared because you challenged me. You said, you'll never, ever get a photo of my dick. And then it was just like, for some reason, I'm like, I'm just going to get because one. Because people... Just to you, prove people, that I could do it. People used to always tease me. They're like, oh, you're staying at Ed's house. Like, yeah, oh, he's going to get... He's going to get tons of photos of your dick. And I was like... <laughs> I mean, I I know that you know it was there was a lot of nudity around that, but I didn't really ever care about that stuff anyway. I was never no you on that. you were always yeah, like I was down for whatever. I I never tripped on that. Deanna like has a story where yeah she thought I like got naked. I mean not thought she well you she were just said, like changing or something. Yeah, but you didn't really did, care that she was there. And yeah, she was just like whoa, I know, that's kind of embarrassing. Like I should have gone <laughs> to the bathroom. 
No. But, yeah. I mean, I had a naked sponsoring video. Like You're, I had, I had plenty of time. Yeah. I, I had my share, my fair share of being naked. If I was packing as much heat as you, I'd probably change <laughs> naked all the time too. I just got the little <laughs> average dude cock, so I keep it hidden, <laughs> respectively <laughs> hidden. No one wants to see that little thing. <laughs> okay. I think that we just wrapped up the podcast. There we go. We're talking about right. dicks. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate it, man. Thank you Thank for having you. us in your house. And I thought we were going to get way more it. philosophical and talk about religion or something, maybe. Do you want to? No. Okay. Well, I do think, you? <laughs> no, I think we're good. I think that, I don't think there's any, there's not really a path to navigate. It's a conversation and we kind of see where it goes. And I think that we touched on some cool stuff. I mean, we touched on, you know, basically your start into pro skateboarding, which I didn't really know about. I mean, I'd probably heard it a little bit here and there, but, and then the impossible, which I was always like, you know, interested in. And I wanted to learn the impossible because of you. And I did learn them. And I remembered seeing you do them continuously on tour and it kept it fresh in my mind. I learned them as a kid and then I kept learning. Yeah. You know, and you oh, know, I was jealous as fuck when you fit impossible 50 <laughs> clip. I don't think you'd have been jealous. Of I, never talked to you, I never talked to you about this, but there was like inner turmoil for me when I, but you know, cause you could have done that in theory, but I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's like what separates Jamie Thomas from Ed Templeton in a lot of well, ways. Well, I mean, wise. obviously, <laughs> it's like you, you can be jealous of the make, but you wouldn't have been jealous of what I had to go through to get there. Like, it was tough for me, you know? And I, I it was older in my career. I was almost 40, and it was, it was oh, like, it was... my whole life kind of evolved around that for a little while. Like, all my thoughts were like, like, I got to get back up yeah. there. I and that's the perfect there. one to do it on. Yeah. To get on is like perfect height for that. I felt it was a little bit steep sometimes because I, I wanted to go... I wanted to, you know, if I went, if I went anything faster than slow, I would get on too low and then I would miss and go onto the ledge, you know? And yeah. I, I feel like a little bit mellower would have been nice, but, and then it was also round. So I set up wider trucks. That's what, that's what's hard about yeah, that. Yeah, I set up wider trucks so would have a better chance of getting in to the trick, you know? And I set up smaller wheels so I'd have a ch better chance of grinding if I wasn't perfect. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, I just try to use the basic physics of, yeah. of it, but yeah, it was. Were you there? It was brutal. When I almost impossible 50 the arco rail was that you i don't think so because that's gnarly though. that's probably why i was so bummed about like seeing that, was the, like, one, that was the one that got away that was the thing like i started messing as a joke almost like i'm like i started flinging a couple like yeah at the rail and it's one of those things where like you joke and then you realize like dude i kind of was like on yeah. that yeah and that rail would have been good for it right and i so like i started doing a few and i and i literally got one and landed on it and grinded and shot it out and that's when I, I had that moment of like, fuck, I'm doing it. Oh, I'm doing it. You know, that yeah. feeling of like, yeah. you just know, like, I'm fucking doing this today. I'm yeah. like, and, and it was a realization, like, I'm going to impossible 50 a fucking like legit rail. Yeah. This is awesome. Security guard walks up and kicks us out right there. Oh, and I never man. went back and like, that's the thing. I, that's what separates you from me is uh, I never like, it didn't become my vendetta. Like, I need to go back to Arco like next weekend. I was just like, eh. I, mean, <laughs> I forgot about it. Like, <laughs> until right now. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, yeah kind of like, oh shit. I was supposed to. I'm supposed to go back and get that dude I, I still struggle with it man like i basically <laughs> i usually when i start trying a trick i can't do any other tricks until like i get that one's scratched off the list and i've you know i've done it recently i had a line that i wanted to do in la and i went back there like four times four weekends in a row like wow. you know but that's just my my method and i i have a hard time moving on until i can close that chapter you know and yeah. like it's i've kind of always had that it's just like well, this, you know you this know vision. me like how did you see my approach to skateboarding during the welcome to hell like filming days well you were confident during that time like i remembered in in, in heavy metal but i wasn't like you but in heavy metal you and i didn't jumping. have to deal with since it was my company i don't think i had to deal with your wrath as much maybe <laughs> you know what i mean like well you i were like way harder you, on everyone else so. well i encouraged you to to push yourself a little bit but you were already kind of doing it and it, you just needed someone to give you the smallest nudge like so in in, in heavy metal you lip slid feebled you know, and front boarded the 10 at UCI. And I remembered being there and I hadn't skated a 10 stair rail yet. Like, I'd yeah, no, I'd, I remember kind of shocking yeah, you. I'd caveman a rail. That's something we should talk about. I was, you already had that footage. I had to refilm it. Because <laughs> it was so shitty. No, Deanna filmed it and she was, I think she was on roller skates and she filmed the line. Shitty. She filmed the line. And it was like, <laughs> it was a line to a lip slide or front board. And I remembered looking at it. It was after live and you're like, yeah, I already got some footage. Like, I'm kind of like already like working on a part. And I remember seeing your footage and it was like, it yeah. was, you know, and Deanna's awesome, obviously. And there's footage in your old useless wooden toys where it shows you like fall down on a park, 
parking lot. Maybe Cecil's been towards the yeah, promo video. Yeah, I slip on some weird... Like, yeah, you fall in the parking, parking lot, and she's like, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, there was footage of her filming you skate that with roller skates, and then the other tricks that she'd filmed of you, they were all, like, high. Like, she filmed them at the same height. And it just didn't make the rail look as big as it was. And I just remembered, and I don't think I filmed them that much better, but I just remembered thinking, like, yeah. it's gnarly that you can front board, lip slide, and no, I, grind No, that's this. what's funny. I remember this, and I think I remember, at the, like, around the time period, telling some people... Because you went on a rampage after that. Well, that was like, I see what's so possible. So that was like the, yeah, it was the catalyst. Because like, I saw it in you that yeah. day. You were like, yeah, it was just weird. You were kind of like, fuck. Like, this is no problem for you, huh? Yeah. I and remember I was just like, I remember thinking like, weird that this guy is that stoked on this. But well, then the you time, went on like, and I, so I tell people like, yeah, that was where I ended. <laughs> like, yeah. like the 10, what was that? It's a 10. You know, like, I'm like, I was like early to 10 stairs. But then I didn't go any further. Like someone oh, like wow. Jamie saw that and just went like, you know, take it to Well, 20s. I mean, I, I, I did my my method was very like, you know, it was very methodical. I basically yeah. no, I, saw I started at a five. But starting at that moment, I feel yeah. like you were like, I think I saw this like nugget in your head of like, I'm gonna fucking do this and I'm gonna take it. <laughs> no, I, I remember thinking. No, I remember thinking I wanted to do that, and I was like. Right now, I have not done any, not one of those three. I did a front board when I was young, but the, the lip slide and the 50 were like really terrifying to me on a 10 stair rail at that time. And I remember thinking like, whoa, like I had 180, no, I had nose slid, 180 nose grinded, front boarded and board slid rails. But, and 180 nose grind was like a small rail, like a five or six or something. Yeah. But I just remembered the 10 and you were like skating it like no problem. And you know, it was just, you were jumping right on it. You'd kicked out one at it, you'd kick one at it and then you would just go right into front board. And I was just like, Whoa, this is gnarly. And I remembered thinking to myself, like, I need to learn this. But I went, I started at a five stair, then I went to a six, then I went to an eight, yeah, and I went to a 10, then I went to a 13. Up. Yeah, and then I kind of... We did that too, to yeah. some extent. Yeah. I, I just did it really fast. I did it like over two weeks or a week, you know, where it was like... <laughs> yeah. Because I'd had the physical ability and I'd had the understanding for skateboarding. So it was for just sure. like a new, a new discipline, you know. And I was yeah. so stoked that it, there was this like wide open... And I remembered when I discovered rail skating that all of a sudden it was way easier to get tricks for your video part. Because you could like <laughs> yeah. take the, instead of taking the stairs, like screw jumping down the stairs, you could take the rail and with very little effort come away with yeah. two, three tricks. Way less impact too. Yeah. I remember thinking like, whoa, I this is. I hated jumping down stairs. I was like, this is the ticket. But. Um, That's funny. I was just trying to think about like, because I think my style was so lackadaisical and like what I was, how I like approached skating that I just wondered if you were like weirded out by my lack of effort. No way. You still put in effort. It was just like <laughs> you would like heel flip up a three stair and then back heel down. You you just had a different way of skating. And you your effort was still there, you know? It was like I never got a feeling of No, lack I, of I don't effort. think I was lazy or anything, but I just felt like I think it, when I when I started coming around you guys and like doing like when we started yeah. filming for that, like your method was like way more intense. And I thought like you kind of looked at me a little bit like this guy's just like not at all, not at all. And the reason doing whatever, no. Like, and the caring. reason the reason why is is that the way you skated was special. Like I don't think that the way I skated was special, like the way I did tricks. You know, so like for me, the stunts became kind of what I was known for. Like me, kind of earning some type of style or you know developing some type of style came way later. It it yeah. it, it came after doing those same tricks for so long that eventually you're gonna do it when he knows grind that looks good if you do a thousand of them, you know, but for you, you had a great style, like in useless wooden toys and all yeah, those things. See, I like, don't see it that way. I know, I've but that's, my style. I know, but that's how, you know, people that, that like the way you skate, like yeah. that's how I saw it. So, you know, grinding a bench and then, you know, pushing like high leg pushes and all that <laughs> stuff. Like that was what got us stoked. And, you know, it was all good. So yeah. I never, I never saw that. I, I mean, you may, and also you beat me to the punch. If anybody was gonna throw a diss around about you, it was you dissing yourself. <laughs> you would you would diss yourself way before anybody else could even get any out, and then we were all just like, "Well, you just took all our arsenals, our, yeah. our ammo." So, <laughs> what do we even have to say? And you know, I don't know. I never I never saw that. I never saw you as like the weakest link or anything like that. I always saw you as like, I got to keep up. I got to do my edge shit, and I got to put my stuff down, and I'll do it. And you always did it. And I always thought that, you know, I never worried about you. I guess what I'm saying is, is that I didn't worry about you not pulling yeah, your yeah. weight, like the front feeble on the kink rail, and you know, rail with the kink, and and welcome to hell. Like, I mean, that part is amazing. Like, there's so many things in there that are awesome. I watched that the other day and was kind of like, I guess I I feel like sometimes that I didn't 
really do what I probably could have done. Like I, I mean, wish, I think that's looking back. I kind of yeah. wish I had a little more drive and a little more, uh, maybe less other interest in the world. Like if yeah. I didn't spend I, any I time doing art and like really focused one hundred percent on skating, I feel like I could have done more damage because I know like physically, I like had that skater body. Like I could do yeah. stuff and like last pretty long and not get hurt. You know? Yeah. And like. Yeah, do like I don't know. But I feel like, some, and I had the confidence at some point. I had it because I got it back to some extent for, for this is skateboarding, which I think is my best. I think like yeah. that's my best part. Yeah. Like I feel like I, trick wise, that was like, better skating. You know, mm -hmm. like that might have been my peak in a way, like around two thousand two. And I feel lucky to like maybe have had two peaks. If if Welcome to Hell was a peak, and like then I did another one, and like if it was from ninety six to. 2002 that's that's pretty awesome i've had two of those but um yeah uh yeah i don't know i just can't help but looking back i guess everyone in some way looks back and goes i wish i did even more but uh part of me really feels like i know for a fact if i like had focused better i could have <coughs> done yeah more but stuff, i think that know? that your personality there was like but that's yeah it is what a part it is. of like, it yeah. you just did it i just yeah. did and I, and I look back and I'm not like, I don't have regrets in that, you know, I don't have like a regret like, oh man, I, I blew it. It's like, I'm happy with everything. Yeah. But it's just like, I know, I personally know that I could have done better and that kind of bums me out only when I think about it, which I don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> in a podcast form, I sometimes have a little, it's talking to someone like him and I start realizing I probably could have done a lot better. I mean, I, I, I think that we all could, you know. Yeah. It's just kind well, of like I mean, it's kind of an obvious thing to say. Yeah, we push it. But, we push it to where we're comfortable with for the time frame of it, you know. I really like your um, your heavy metal part. I just love how much pushing there is in that part and all those lines like falling around the HB spots and, you know, like I, I like that that part. I like that video. That video doesn't get seen very much. Yeah. I mean, we didn't. We made it in like a couple, three, four to six months or something, but um, it was still a cool time because we were really forming forming Toy Machine during that time. And then you know, there's like Muska guest tricks in the like you know slam section or friend section, but he's not even on the team yet. Yeah, we didn't even talk about that really. That was like the full precursor. That's like the first Jamie Thomas. Yeah, well, that was kind we of did like all that video too. Really, it's like. Well, that was. I mean, I remembered coming to you and you being like, you know, I hear you make videos or I heard you're motivated, and I went to Tomiato and I was like, I'd already seen the live video and I thought it was just like. You guys just no. I just thought you got. <laughs> I thought you guys just used every trick you had on film. We did. And I was like, that's, yeah, that, was fully there's no, um, there's no editing. So I was like, we should do something where we do it on purpose. Yeah. And I remembered wanting to make a video soon because I felt like there was going to be a new kind of identity for the brand. And I was like, let's get started on it. Yeah, you know, let's get started on it. And I was like, yeah, yeah. in with that because I was. Totally. Like, it was what you were saying was obvious. I was yeah. like, like, I wish you had been there earlier to say like don't do this <laughs> no me. all you said was is like yeah for live we just put everything in we didn't really know what we were doing we didn't have a plan so no. if you got a plan let's do we it we did it one night with that guy what was that guy's Geffrem or John Geffrem Geffrem went to Geffrem's place and just hammered it out overnight wow yeah that's so that's right. why there's all those wipes and stuff because I was we were getting giddy by the end just like yeah let's <laughs> just do that stupid sheep wipe you know like yeah so dumb <laughs> Have um, people have talked about a Welcome to Hell reunion tour? Have you heard hear people talking about that? Yeah. We talked about it at one time. I've talked about it, yeah. Maybe the oldest, crustiest dudes out there now. I think we've missed our window. It really would have been better like two years ago, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three years ago. I don't know. Alyssa was it before I broke my leg? They were skating. That? If it was before I broke my leg, it could have been awesome. Yeah, it was before you broke your leg. We talked about it, but... It, Five years ago. That would have been Five sweet. years ago. I think it could still happen. Oh, I, I've talked to BA about it. He's into it. Everybody's in it. Everyone's yeah. at like a has gotten over the hump and they are in this like in the cool land of just like yeah you know living on I don't know what it is. Being who, who do we gotta talk to Sinclair about lining that up? No, it's just something we need to do. Yeah, I think like you and me probably are the people that have like the actual work schedules type stuff to yeah it would probably that be ha yeah. has to like jive together, and then everyone else is a little more open. All right, well that's it. You Welcome heard to it. Welcome to Hell Reunion Tour. Welcome to Hell Reunion Tour. Coming to a town near you.